All right, guys, we are here. This is TTFT. We are joined today by some very, very special people. People. Three, two, one. Sure. Three, two, one. Sure. Let me bring that back. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, see, so you guys are in the fuck up episode right now. You didn't even know it. Three, two, one. All right, guys. TTFT, you know what time it is, guys. We here at TTFT have a motto. Don't talk about shit that you don't know about. And we've, we've reviewed about, what, 40 movies now? 35, 40 movies? Mm-hmm. And so we talk shit. We've given praise. And how dare we do that without showing you some of the great artistry we've done. But before we do that, I got to let you guys know, we don't just have one interview. We have the cast, the crew, and the people that are you. We're joined today by Jared Rush, Jeff Wells, Mr. Tarantino Jones, and Secret Grest to be announced as their lazy ass come in because they're late. Guys, how you doing? Pretty good. Doing good. (laughs) Love it, love it, love it. Durden, tell us what movie we're reviewing today. That one right there. I'm going to kill someone this Friday. Could you, could you have some more fucking enthusiasm? Yeah. To God, let me show you how it should have been. Done. Durden, tell them what we're reviewing today. I'm going to kill someone this Friday. That's how you do it. Yeah. We're actually reviewing Durden Gottfried's I'm Going to Kill Someone this Friday. Filmed in Jacksonville, Florida. It was filmed in Jacksonville, but it was not a Jacksonville film. Hell that's, the yeah. dream no, that's the fucking trait. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hell, I'm done. I'm, all right, that's it, guys. Good shit. <laughs> so uh, uh, Jeffrey Wells played uh, Brody. Tarantino played Joaquin Guzzi Goo. That's Who came according up with that name? That's, according, name? that's according to IMDb. I can't, I don't know. It sounds kind of, you know, yeah, you know, it is what it is. You know, that's my brother. So Joaquin. It sounds, Goose. It sounds dark. Jared, of course, co- uh, co- co-writer, executive producer, everything else, sir, location scouter, talent finder. Before you move on, Jared, did we miss anything? Um, no, I think we're good. <laughs> He's also created his Dante Drench, Jared Tarot. Oh, that's a that's a that's a triple. Yeah, that's that's a, a trifecta part. of uh, doing a uh, fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, where to begin? Where to begin? Um, so everybody that's watching this episode will have just seen the movie. We're in a premiere of the movie live on the channel right before this episode goes. So um, let's just start with the uh, concept. Uh, I think, Jared, you could speak on that best. You had just seen Never Go Back and then. Right. Yeah. So uh, Durden Goffrey uh, wrote, directed, and uh made this amazing film called Never Go Back. And it was uh, a saga of a family, of a father, son, uh, going out, escaping everything, just to live life. And when I saw that film, I was like, holy cow, man. I mean, it was really well done. And I started understanding uh, Durden's, his style. And I thought, man, you should really do a psychological thriller because the way you write, the way you do, you know, you, you produce camera work, everything. I think that would be something fantastic. And I thought he'd be like, you're correct. And then Durden said to me. Oh, no, I was. I'm weird. <laughs> I, and the fact that no, he actually <laughs> said no, because he was going to do he was working on this uh, um, was going to be a documentary. And can I yes. take it from here, yes. Jared? So please do, please do, re- sir. Re- to me. And so you said that Durden, Durden didn't answer. And no, I, I, said, me. I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for leaving you hanging. I was totally leaning on you for the entirety of that story. Because I know. And that's why we're here. Yeah. So okay, I like guys, to I improv. <laughs> there we go. And so what happened was you came to me and said, I'm thinking about doing this, got this story about this guy. And you were 10 seconds to the story. And I was like, this is a bad idea. This is such a bad idea. He told me where he was going. He was going along. And see, here's the thing, guys. If you're a filmmaker, you can't be scared. You can't be scared to take chances. And when you're willing, like stupidly and ignorantly, we put our lives on the line to do certain things for the art, if you will. And you were going to meet a guy who I had a loose relationship with as far as like seven degrees of separation. I knew somebody he was akin to. I dated somebody's. I dated I dated a female member of his family, and uh, he probably was going to kill you if we kept up doing this. Yeah, I mean, seven degrees is a separation. Lot. Yeah, that's a, I mean that's a few. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And with that being said, thankfully you didn't do it because you're still here with us today. Corona wasn't going to take you out, but somebody was. And I and Jared, tell us a story later about you guys riding the car to the store for another day. But fast forward from that premise became Robert Partridge, and I remember when you first called me and you let Jared know that you had this script. And 
we, how dare me or him look at you and say anything other than, oh man, we want to do this. And then you humbled yourself and came back and said, I want you guys to get help me give it a right and treatment. And I was like, damn. Well, let me back up just a little bit. It, okay. was, it was three things that the, that the movie, that, that is like three things for the tripod of I'm going to kill someone this Friday, the inception of the story. Jared saying psychological thriller, dead nuts. And then right when, before you start making a movie, if you don't have a big budget, you just kind of have to think, what do I have to work with and start there and then build on that. Well, build on what you have to work with. And I thought, what does Jacksonville have to offer that a lot of places don't? Well, it's got this badass, really big tree. So let's just make something that centers around that. And then Dead Nuts comes into play because it's like somebody with, um, with like a, a, that's borderline psychotic in a lot of ways or bipolar or any, like it's a fascinating, like uh, American psycho type of individual. It's just a fascinating person to have as a main character because it's just a playground. You could kind of do anything you want with it and it's psychological. So you can do anything you want with the premise, the dialogue, the premise, uh, everything is just kind of, it can all be explained away by it's it's, it's internal. Now, this, this is what I want to ask Tarantino. If you, let me ask you this, coming from perspective, because you actually know us, you've done projects with us before, uh, certain films, certain projects. When we first told you and you first heard about this film, what was your mindset and what what did you think was going to become of it? Um, again, you know, I'm gonna just be honest with you. Uh, I've been known, you know, my man David Dirt for a long time. We like you say we've done a lot of projects, so you never really expect, you know what I'm saying, to expect what you're going to get from here is what I'm basically saying. So you know you can't expect nothing good, you can't expect nothing bad. You just gotta just wait for the unexpected, and then you know, um, you know, you had you know the co-writers, co everybody weird, you know, and I don't mean that in no bad way. What I'm saying is. This is one of my favorite films. I actually went back, you know, y'all guys know I watched it today again. And, you know, I just caught so many things that I didn't catch the first time. You know what I mean? And so, you know, from the, the color coordinations, the, you know, the, the way he, you know, it, just the scenes with his wife, his interactions with his wife meant a lot. It's like... You know, it, it was an awesome film is basically what I'm telling you. And so my, my mindset on it is like I would definitely tell people to go watch it. Go just, you know, just sit back, relax and just, you know, just check out Robert Partridge because it's going to be some things in there. You're going to focus so much on Partridge that you'll miss everything else. You know what I'm saying? So awesome. Okay. Awesome. Um, Jeff, we'll get we'll get into the audition in just a minute. But while we're in the the portion of the production, as far as like the writing, the writing stages, I'm curious what your first impression was upon reading the script. Uh, I mean, it, it was a mystery. And, uh, let, let me let me put this out there, too. I don't want this episode to be just a puff piece for the movie. We're three years away from it now. Like uh, uh, the, the good will only mean something if we're totally honest about things that we uh, out, but let's just start. We haven't got that. We didn't get to that point yet, though. We haven't got. No, we're, in, we're in great. the first draft of the script. There is definitely yes, something yes, to point out. Listen, I have like when you, say, when you say, hey, listen, man. What, is there something that you know I'm ready to give it to you, David? And you know, eh, eh, this is Jeff's <laughs> time now. I asked Jeff a question. <laughs> Jeff, tell um, us about when you went yeah, home. So you know, you know, I love you, man. You know, I love you. Baby. I don't mean it like that, but I'm ready to give it to you, baby. I'm about to, I'm about to mute him. <laughs> <laughs> this became an only fans episode this is getting weird <laughs> Jay you already know what it is Jay <laughs> it's ongoing he get into my bag <laughs> okay uh, so Jeff. Tarantino is it alright if Jeff continues now yeah I want Jay to go ahead and take over man Jay because I'm all <laughs> over the place okay. um I'm, I'm trying to remember the the whole process, like how how I found out about it, how, you know, I don't remember if it was just like a Facebook post randomly. It was like, hey, tomorrow at two, or it might've been like this afternoon at two. And I was like, oh crap, um, I want to do more film stuff. So, okay. And it's, 
it's on the north side. All right, I'll make my way out there. You know, me, me and Justin went because he was like, I want to get into some film stuff too. So I was like, all right, let's go. And, you know, I read through the script. I'm like, all right, I'll do my best. I, at a glance, I was like, wow, this is not a role for me. Okay, cool. And, you know, I was completely right. <laughs> and then things changed, which I thought was fascinating. That, that was one of the first times I've ever dealt with that. Now, there has been another time where someone said, ooh, let's let's add something for you. Um, but you were the first uh, to have ever done that, where it was like, you know, you don't, you don't fit this storyline, but we have this other thing that we're thinking about. And I just thought that was, that was very interesting. And I mean, it Definitely. was, it still had that audition um, structure that is very nerve wracking, but at the same time, nobody was uh, just making that happen. Just the actors themselves in their own heads. And that's just what they do. Um, so when I went in, I was, I, I vaguely remember myself being pretty relaxed, like being able to just kind of, here you go, here I am here, you know, and even Justin, you know, who was relatively new at acting at the time, uh, had the same kind of experience. So that was my first thing. I can't remember. I don't, I don't think I, I don't remember if we ever got the full script, um, or, or if I got it. Um, I know in the read through, I, I feel like we did have Right. Oh my God. Yeah. During the read through, everybody was so focused on their part. It's not like time to examine the script or anything. But I want to ask Jeff this real quick. Jeff, you being your your union member, correct? Because we we, yeah. we interview yeah we okay we interview a lot of our guests and some of them talking about union and non union. Let me ask you a question. When at the time you weren't union and you did the film and you took a chance, what made you? not just with this film as an actor take a chance because it's not like someone comes to you hey i got a film and you just do it what was the moment what what to you said hey i want to do this like you said it was a facebook post but you're not just responding to everything what made you say I, i'm going to do this one i like the genre um you know it, i think you said that it was going to be a suspense and then question 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 you know and, and that had me asking more um and, and i mean jacksonville is the biggest small town you know, and I knew some people who knew some people who knew some people. I'm like, all right, y'all are vouching for this going. Yeah, this is going to happen. So that that helped me uh, want to jump. I mean, actors have to jump. You know, the, the problem is there's going to be occasions where not to bring up OnlyFans, but people end up <laughs> a little bit exploited at times. And this the fact that it, you already had the support of the community going, well, we've, we've got. Yeah, no, they'll get a job done. They'll they'll get this. This film will be completed because it's sad that that is the benchmark. Like, yeah. will it be completed? Yes. Yeah. No, maybe so. That's that's number one of independent filmmaking. Will you finish the project? If you you're know, paying somebody and if you're paying somebody an exposure, you can at least give them something for their real. Yeah. The end of it. Jerry, do you have any experiences with stuff not finishing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, I'll say better. actually it's funny uh, and this this involves <laughs> Jeff and what he just said because this show is not just about movies and talk it's also for people to understand the industry. Oh, and yeah. so so Jeff uh we were at a woman in film and television at uh Blackfin uh years ago and there was a yeah, film that I no longer am a part of but you know right before Kill and I remember he looked at me, he gave me that infamous actor, like, you never let me know about this. And I went, I remember looking at him going, trust me, you're, it's good. No. I, I didn't let you know, but then I was like, but then there's this thing happening I'm, I'm getting involved in. So I, I think what is interesting is, um, as in any in industry in the sense of, uh, of this craft of acting, I think it's very important that people are honest and whether it's Jacksonville, which is the largest, smallest city, Hollywood, wherever you are, be honest, you know, because people always just go do like I just need to act. I don't if I don't go if they offer me this job, I don't do it. I'll be, you know, kicked out. But it's like, who is kicking you out? Because even locally, this happened to people like one of my friends was like telling an actress who was starting out like, oh, whenever an actor tells you to to like, I want I have this part for you. You say yes. And I go, no. Because if you got to research their stuff, if they're not good, you can't even use it for real and you've wasted all your time. So, but yeah, it's, uh, 
never dull in that world of what you're on set and you kind of find out last minute, but it taught me a valuable lesson. Then obviously being part of kill and, you know, the whole process uh, with Durden and, you know, everything of that world, which being my first true production, I'm co-creator, co-writer, and, and it, especially as executive producer, you know, I, I, I've been on set since this and I just drew myself into it. And I, I hear other people who don't do what I did, which I don't get it. Like I just throw myself into it. And I feel like that's what we all did on kill. Um, well, we, but, we go yeah. from, uh, let's, we'll get, let's get the, so we, we have the first draft of the script and then, um, Jerry, can you talk about, and you probably weigh in on this. I don't remember much from that evening, but we sat on Royals back porch and we came up with the final version of the script, the three of us. And I believe it was an all nighter, right? It was a lot of shoppies, yeah. mellow mushroom and Remy Martin. Okay. And Jameson and, and also cigars. And, yes. And chocolate milk. For you. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Is that a cold term for something else? Uh, no. But yeah. what, what would you say from going from a first draft to a final draft? Like what, what, what do you think? What would like, what is your proudest moment as far as uh, taking it from a first draft to a final draft? J Jared, Same question for you. Too. Yeah, but, but Jared, let me lead in on this because I want you to finish it up. I'm going to say this when, when you asked both of us, I'm not even on a lot. I'm like, okay, I'm not a big fan. And it has nothing to do with you. I was like, I'm not a big mm -hmm. fan of producers sitting in on a writing session. Like, I appreciate you asking me. And remember me and you were fine. Not, right, not right. Jared. The producer, I don't want any producer sitting there on the writing session, right, but I was right. like, okay, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just see how it goes. It's just another challenge. And I remember him coming in and it's all, to me, it's always about chemistry. But then I thought about it. Like, listen, when you have a pie, you can make the best fucking pie in the world. That doesn't mean it's going to sell because you don't know how to advertise the pie. Nobody knows you make this fucking pie. And if you're not taste testing and you're not doing this, you're doing that. So if you're not going to have everyone involved in the project from beginning to end, then you can't truly vet the script. And when I tell you when you came in, I didn't know what to expect from the writing person. I knew you could do the things producing wise. I didn't know what you brought in writing. And when we started meshing throughout the night, I'm like, I'm either drunk or is this either a really good script? And it turned out to be both. <laughs> and I will say this, like you had some very good insight. So tell me from your, I, I for me, it was beautiful because again, I didn't feel we should even touch the script. And then with you saying, no, I know I wrote this, but I want you guys to vet it for me. And then what we came up with, I'm like, nobody's fucking with this. So, Jerry, go. go. Well, I'll, I'll go back to uh, late May 2017, early birthday gift from Durden. He, of course, he said, oh, I got the the script for you um, for your birthday. But he actually gave it to me early as a surprise. And before that, we actually, uh, Durden and I, before anyone else was talking I was um, and we saw having a meeting discussing the movie. And I said, I want to get this done by September. And it's April. And when I finally sat there on my floor and read the script, the first thing I would say is, shit, this is not going to happen in September. Um, because I didn't realize how intense it was. But to go from that script, which I thought was mind-blowing, and then the reason we actually did a lot of the rewrites, which most people, you know, and Jeff, you can definitely contest to this, is we, everyone who auditions, the first time I ever know what people I talked to, everyone got a position. And we created, you know, the IT, we, because we were blown away by every single person there that, I think that's also, I think the, the talent is what pushed a lot of the rewrites that we can't say no to Jeff, we can't say no to this person. Um, and then when we actually sat there, and it was almost like I was like, it was very surreal for me because I've always envisioned doing this in life. To sit around and, you know, you talk about the proudest moment. The proudest moment for me was in the rewrites when we're sitting there at the premiere and the line um, where it's like, you know, you know, you spend this money, you know, you know, $700 for this, this and that. It's like, you're either cheating on me or you're, you know, you're doing cocaine. It's like, who are you cheating? You know, I'm cheating on you with cocaine. I remember sitting next to my friend at the premiere, thinking about that line and going, holy shit, it's like a dark comedy, a black comedy, like I didn't realize. Um, but to me, it's like, I realized seeing myself on screen, but with the writing aspect of it, I, I got more like blown away by the reaction um, from the audience when it came to words that we put on paper. But what the rewrite is, I've never experienced anything of that since. And I really miss that aspect that we could sit there. Like, again, you don't have anything against me and vice versa, but you know, Durden. And that was the night when you said, when Durden was talking about his, his, his eyesight and his, 
issues. And you said, we don't need your eyes. We need your vision. And it was like, and that's exactly what happened. And that's I, copyrighted, and I, by the way, to Roar.com. That's copyrighted, copyrighted. But yeah, go ahead. Yes, thank you. <laughs> right. But I, I think in the sense of, well, I, I was one way by the rewrites because we, we said we were going to not leave until we finish it. Mm-hmm. I think we got to three in the morning. We did. And then we had notes and then it, it worked. But I, I was kind of blown away by the more I've grown in my in my craft, talking to people who've been on like big things and hearing their side of it when it came to writing the script or the process going, what? So, you know, I got very spoiled very quickly um, going from this production as being part of it, creator of it, you know, with everyone and then go somewhere else and going, you're doing what? <laughs> And it's We're also five hour lunch. <laughs> wow. Let me let me come to that stage just to hang out. Now let me ask you this. And, and Jerry, thank you for that. Because we we talked to Jeff. Jeff has brought it brought us from a, a non-union actor to a union actor's perspective. We've talked to you, Jared, from the perspective of a producer and a writer and slash wardrobe assistant. Of course, uh, me and Durden come from the writing, the I mean, me from the acting, and you from the directorial perspective. But I want to talk to Tarantino about this. Tarantino, when you've already told us what it's about for us to present you with the script, and you, to, of course, are in the film, but when someone says they're doing a suspenseful psychological thriller, in Jared's words, dot, 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 how the hell do you make a song for that soundtrack? How, how, we're giving you dot, dot, dot. Like, talk to us about that from, from that perspective. Um... I think that, you know, because me and Durden go way back, I kind of, you know, wanted to channel his inner mind. You know what I mean? I've heard his music. I've heard y'all music. You know what I mean? And it's like, I kind of, I, I kind of wanted, didn't want to delve in something that, uh, delve in something that, that, you know what I mean? That, um, that I would make normally. I wanted to make something specifically that I know that he possibly would like, or I hope that he would like. You know what I mean, and um, you know, so it's like process of getting this paper. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta reach out to you know your your inner you know something else that you gotta get out your comfort zone. Is basically what I'm saying. And um, it was an op- awesome opportunity. Um, you know when you know again when I watch the film and I see my music come up in it, it's awesome. You know what I'm saying. I don't care how what, what the situation is. I'm always gonna be grateful. So it was just an awesome opportunity. And, you know, the song as far as itself, it was just like, you know, based on Robert Partridge. I can, that's, what, that's what I could say. I just, I wrote it based on him. You know what I mean? That character, we, I'd never seen the film, so I had to do my best. You know what I mean? You know, Tarantino, I couldn't have put it any better myself. But let me ask you this. How does it feel to be a guy playing a guy playing a guy? You actually recorded a song for the actual film, and then you actually recorded audio in the film, and then you came to the film to watch yourself, hear yourself, see yourself, hear yourself. Um, Again, exactly. this is the thing about, uh, no, no, real talk, if you really think about it, though, and that's, that's pretty funny, but if you think about it, it's just about what I boil that down to is relationships. You know, without, you know, so simple. you know, different relationships people don't know each other i know jeff through y'all you know what i mean so it's like i look at it as um the more work that we do the more that the the work will expand and it's going to be opportunities for everybody so i know i'm answering your question on more of a broad level thank you for admitting that because i was going to say that when i came out there later you know it's just more so you know I, I, you know, anything somebody asks me to do, especially if they're my friend, my brother, I'm going to try to make sure it's, again, it's not about me at that point. It's more so about, you know, what the project has going on at the time. So I appreciate you saying that, but the angle I was coming from, and like you said, in all seriousness, was that you had the knowledge and the talent to not only record for the film, but then we say, hey, listen, we have this problem on set, which I think we all can agree, Jared, Jeff, uh, Terrence, we all can agree. There's, I don't care how much big your budget is, you're going to have problems on set. We had mm-hmm. a problem on set and you were able to step in and do audio and you could well, no, them- back, back up just a little bit okay. because this, this is a good, like we did everything that you could possibly do to prepare Correct. properly for a day of production. Like everything within our power was done. Yes. At all, all places are filled. Correct. Schedules are confirmed. Times are confirmed. Mm-hmm. Then you get out there. You have this is and this isn't just a production day with the league who is like, all right, we know things are gonna get fucked up. This is a production day with like extras that aren't accustomed to film that like 
why isn't everything going exactly like it should? They already don't expect it to take more than an hour or two. Mm -hmm. And now we're out here and all of the crew has not shown up. Someone very important has not shown up. The audio person has not shown up. The audio person has the equipment from the night before. My equipment. All of the extras are here. Everybody's waiting to not be heard, seen and not heard. So you're there. William, I believe we're in shooting in William, director of photography, William Bishop's neighborhood. Jacob. He happened to have his audio equipment down the street. And then he was able to get that. Uh, Justin Mann came that day. He yes. had some of his equipment that he let us use once he got there. And you were a free body. Never had held a, a boom mic before, but you've been in a studio. So you know sound a little bit and enough to be able to at least step in so we can do that. We can stay on schedule because now we're already two hours behind on a schedule that has uh, you can't even like room for errors like 10 minutes or we're already behind on the next scene. So that I think that's like I say all that to say that even when you do everything right, shit will still happen that you have to overcome and there's two different kinds of people there's the people that were just throw their hands in the air and give up like oh i guess it just didn't work out or you find another set of audio equipment and able body and you keep rolling and i think we finished that day ahead of schedule we did and also to before uh this conversation continues. We have to remember that was the second day and it was the biggest production day at the softball field with over 40 between extras and cast and parents and kids. Mm -hmm. And that was a very long day. And the fact that all that came together and. Whew. Again, it's a testament of just saying that once we, again, that's why I say Jay, uh, that relationships with relationships you know what i mean is be, i believe in you you believe in me if you got something going on i believe we get and make it happen and then we move forward you know because again that's that's all any show that you ever see on tv or anything that's what they did right somebody believed in somebody and say let's make this happen this is my vision and somebody say i believe in it and now they made it so at the end of the day that's all we got to keep doing and it's going to happen for us so Jeff, let me let hold me hold on one second for you, Bray. Uh, Travis has just joined. Oh, uh, Travis. Travis. Travis, how's my Travis makeup? Tra how's my trap? How's my makeup, man? You're, you're on mute, man. You're on you mute, bro. I'm gonna I say what you get. Take that mute off. They can't silence you, brother. That's the unmute. <laughs> there you go. There we go. There we go. Hey. Hey. There we go. Uh, yeah, so you, your makeup is, looks is, good. Thank you. This is Travis Kleiber. He did the hair and makeup and so much more. Uh, yeah, he was really, did oh, everything. No, no, you hold on real quick. He was giving compliments. No, I don't care. He was giving compliments. <laughs> to who? They compliment. Remember care. the girl like I like his hair. Oh yeah. Well, you could you could say okay, that in just a second. I said hold on a second. Three, I didn't say hold on indefinitely. Two. <laughs> go. In my introduction to Travis, I just want to say that Travis on there was maybe like two days out of the whole production that you didn't uh, that you weren't able to make it. There was like an issue with yeah. your bike one night and your absence was felt very much like uh, there is there is a certain uh, peace of mind that came with you being there, because when I saw you show up, I knew that between between you, Jared, and Royal, if there is anything that was needed, it was going to manifest itself very quickly. Bing. Yeah, especially you. Like you were willing to do anything to make sure that we got what was needed done. Even if well, I was because I'm uh, knocking so. on doors at mansions. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the script. With the script was like solid. You guys were solid, so I just felt it felt like a family. You know what I mean? So that's why I was passionate about being there as much as I could. And I was bummed out the two days I couldn't make it, but you know, on set, it was just so much fun, you know, like shooting with shooting a movie with your friends. How, how much better can you get? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, I just want to say, I appreciate it. Yeah. Anytime I'm down to do it again, whenever y'all are ready. So. Well, you're, you're here just in time because we just kind of got out of the, the writing where we're, we're getting into production now but before we got into production i wanted to ask uh jeff when you read the script like this is more along the lines of the audition casting 
was there a was there like a particular character that you were hoping to get like when you when you read it was there somebody that's actually you didn't read the script how the hell yeah. did we do the audition did we just, it, you, just it was the just things refer, it, it was the no, dinner, we had sides it was the dinner scene um between right. Robert and um and the wife and and then the other two the couple where it was just kind of politics and it was you know was fun. Okay. <laughs> let me let me transition the question a little bit then is there now seeing the movie after after the fact if you were the casting director do you think that like if besides brody who else do you think would have been a good person to cast you as a good character oh i'm an arrogant as hell i'd say partridge but you know that's just because he's on screen most. Oh, no, and and I could see it. It would have been very disarming because you have a very pleasant list to mean. If you look at it as enough times, Brody could be a killer. He's coming in IT and shit, but he can fuck me alone. Those people are fucking weird. Well, and, and honestly, when you know, when I when I read him and and you know started thinking, it was I tried not to get into my own head, but I was like, all right, I'll just play it as you know, he's exhausted, whatever, blah blah blah. But then when. When I watched it, I was like, oh, my God, he's he's literally Milton from Office Space who burned the place to the ground. Right, right, right. Like, he was the psycho. So I'm like, all right. So in a way, I ended up as an accidental red. Yeah, <laughs> my stapler. Um, you know, he was kind of a, a red herring sort of um, to where or, or at the same time, he just he is a different type of crazy. You know, that that's mm-hmm. something that I noticed in all of not all, but at least a good number of the characters is that they had a thing that made them a little off, you know, <laughs> in, in all of them. Like it just, there was something a little bit, and I think that's what added to the tension of it overall is that there's just, is, you know, that, that disquieting, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of uh, adding to the tension, we're going to add uh, Brie in here. <clears throat> Oh, joining us from Rolotia first, showed up. Rolotia first, showed up. It's her first week in college. Everybody, congratulate her. Clap it up, damn it! Well, she's not, she's not connected yet. She can't hear it yet. I don't. I don't care. Start clapping now. Come to the stage. <laughs> Start clapping now. <laughs> oh, that's, you've been going to a lot of open mic nights. I can tell. Yes. Yeah. 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 Did you get to turn? Daddy, where the hell are you at? <laughs> oh, my God. We're not clapping for you, sir. <laughs> Look at Tarantino. Sit down and drink your booty and calmness. What is Tarantino doing in the background? All right, we didn't give him this great induction. Where is she? Well, he's not drinking OG, I tell you that. Oh, my gosh. There she goes. I thought kids knew there how to use this. Oh, there she is. Hey. 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 Where's your Uncle Tarantino? He's ran out of champagne. Where's he at? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jayla. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Swell. I love it. Uh, yeah. You should give your. You should give the introduction for Jayla. All right. Hey, All right. Here we go. All right. Go. Hey. All right. All right. Five nine. Coming out of Duval County, averaging one Oscar per year since seventh grade. You know her. Number one in your program. Number twelve in your hearts. Jayla Royal Bree, and I'm going to kill someone this Friday. <laughs> Hey! Oh my gosh, what is hey. going He got this in my bag. Hey. <laughs> hey, that's my niece, man. She turning up, man. This first year of college, man. Hey, make sure you turn you up. Sleep, you sleep by 8 o'clock. Average good yeah. time. You know what I mean? You Your dad is going to come up there. Me and Uncle David, we finna come in there at the pool. You already know what it is, so I'm sorry for taking over my bag, man. I, I just be happy to see that. So we got, what, what, what we got, David? Meanwhile, oh, back to Jayla. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Jayla, we were actually talking about the auditions. and Oh, yeah, what, my bad. Can you tell us about uh, how you how you ended up playing Brie and what your initial thoughts were about the character? Okay. So I ended up playing Brie. I really wouldn't say there was an audition process. I had um, previous... Six, I had... I had film. I had a little um, bit of stuff that the director and the producers could look at for. So I really didn't have to audition. But when I first got cast, I just it took a while for me to get into character because it was somebody that I, it's the exact opposite of who I am. So 
just getting into character it's a little different for me but being the daughter of the king you know I have to you know it's kind of easy it comes easy you know okay no tears needed okay got enough of those but yeah I was it's saying it was because pretty, you gave her the way yeah I would say it was pretty easy for me to get into character but still like it took a lot of dedication seeing how it was somebody that I really wasn't in real life look can I can I ask this question what when you say how was it hard to get into character was it was it harder to get into character or out of character because again you played this character for quite some time so once you finally became her did what was the process like becoming and then coming out of the character um i don't know i would say it was just like a switch just being able to like being able to turn it on and turn it off and knowing when to turn it on and like when to keep it on um as far as like practicing and rehearsals went I would probably like it's just something about when the camera hits me that's when it's like on like it's not, it's always 100 percent on it's probably 95 percent on when the camera's not on but like just being able to have that switch yeah I will see <laughs> I will be honest. I thought that because um, I'd only I didn't I didn't see that much until we started shooting, and I I really thought that uh, you were just going through like a teenage angst type of thing. I didn't <laughs> realize that you were as bubbly as you were until I was like, oh my god, she really was playing a character, like yeah. deep in deep. It was the, the polar opposite of how you are in real life. Yeah. You did a really good job. I mean, it is your first job. feature film, phenomenal, right? Phenomenal job. Thank you. <laughs> did you. Did you ever worry about playing that role and having to go back to school? Um, I mean, because you technically have, have you been found out. You've probably been homeschooled for the last two years, probably. Probably. Yeah, um, but, yeah I, I said I really wasn't, like, again, like, I wasn't really, it, the time we were going through, like, when filming this, it was a lot of that actually going on in school. So it was kind of, like, weird for me to play a character like that. But I say going back to school, you just got to be able to have that switch. But it also helped me see the mindset of the students that are, that may be like that or have maybe gone through the same thing. So just seeing, like, different, it opened up a new perspective for me when going back to school. I have a uh, I have a follow up question for you, Jayla. But before we yeah. get into that, I want to welcome Joseph Steerman, played Pat Durrett. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bring him in. Welcome, Joseph. Man. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. hello. So that you and uh, Jayla just joined us as well. This was kind of uh, this was both of your feature films, correct? Like absolutely. I, I was, and yours too, right, yeah. Jayla? Okay, yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Joseph, I'll get back to you in just a second. Jayla, when I have two questions for you. One, what it, being your first feature film, um, what was that like? But also, when you heard about the character, this goes back to the review. Were you at any point um, that have any concerns or hesitations about playing a Black girl that does this? Did you think that that might, at any point, did you think that this is sending a message that I don't, I don't want to be a part of? Um, not really, only because I haven't seen it, like, like in real life, you've never seen, like, oh, it's that one Black girl that goes and just shoots up the school. So I really haven't seen it done before. So it helped me also think, like, oh, it's a character. Like, you never, I never really thought of it as, like, um, I never, really, I know I understand acting is going to be uncomfortable, which is what I was learning, like, around the same time in school because I went to DA so we learned like about being comfortable in our character being comfortable with our acting so that um kind of helped me I never had any doubts I trusted you guys with everything and um yeah was it? thank you um uh, Joseph I know you said uh, I know I said I will get to you in just a second but I need to I need to put one more thing before you because I saw a message come in from Travis that he's currently walking around where we shot the jogging scene so we have we have Travis on location, apparently, right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so I'll flip the camera really quick. If it'll flip. There we go. Yeah, so down here, right behind Monty's, Shores Liquor uh, and Bar, Avondale. Nice. Yeah, yep. And that, up the street is where we put the sign up for the missing kid, too. So 
I don't know exactly where it's at, but this was very scary that night. So it worked out well for the film. So the, the sign for the missing dog that we put up and left. That's out it. The with, dog. Uh, yep. I think it had my phone number on it. Yeah, it did. Um, yep. And I never was, knew you left it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah we, we forgot it. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. It's a good and that time. location we found at the last minute because it was one of those things. But yeah, we just find the neighborhood street somewhere in this vicinity. And I think yep. you didn't didn't you go around and scout that and find the you found that place, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were, we were we were like we were crazy looking for places. Like, um, I think everybody was pretty much scouting locations basically for the film. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you found it. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. Great, Travis, <laughs> own it, man. Own yeah, it, man. brother. Oh, uh, there we go. There's the, there's the, this is the street right here. So that's it. That's where we shot that scene. For yeah. sure. And this 360 yep. partridge look. Yeah, exactly. Yep. The nice houses and everything. It worked out nicely. So this, this, these people do not pay those mortgages to have this kind of bullshit happening on the street. <laughs> <at sundown. laughs> exactly. Yep. Like, what are y'all doing out here? Like, what was it? Like 10 o'clock at night we were out here? Yeah. Yeah. That was good times. Um, Joseph, what was your first impression when you, um, with the first day of shooting um, that that night at uh, Chamblin's? W- what was your impression there? Of because I mean we we had the opportunity of being your first impression as far as a feature film, and I think you're coming into the call late, so I did put, I did put out the preface that this is an, a no puff piece. This is. <laughs> This is a safe space. <laughs> Absolutely. Honesty, integrity. Well, well, to not sound too cliche, um, I have to tell you that it was it was magical for me. Um, being a stage actor and sort of always wanting to to be on film. And I remember, you know, showing up to location, you know, walking in, being very, very nervous, and not really met many of my co-stars at all. And then I was really welcomed. I, I felt very welcomed on set. Um, and I got to give a lot of credit to Jarrett for that. He was sort of the, he was sort of the hand man there who sort of came in and, and, and greeted me, made me feel comfortable. Uh, hey, buddy, around. you need me to get you anything? You need <laughs> me to get you good? anything? You good? You good? All right. <laughs> 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was, but it, but it was, it was, it was nice. And it was, it was neat, neat seeing, you know, the layouts and the things that I'd always seen before about how, how scenes are set up and the, you know, all the equipment and the tracks on the floor and all that stuff. It just seemed, I, I, kept, I kept pinching myself saying, am I really here? Is this, is this really, just really happening to me? Um, did you so happen, yes, that was my first impression. Did you happen nice. to hear uh, a particular crew member suggest capturing the audio with a cell phone during your, uh, during your production night? No, I did not. Good, good. Hey, all right, great. Awesome. We did, we did our we job. Did we did our job. job, man. Great. All is well that ends well. Let Lou move right on. <laughs> Thank you. Now, just let me ask you this because I remember I remember meeting you and then I remember seeing you act and in the in the midst of this, we're you know, we're slating, we're doing all this stuff. So I'm not really paying attention to your performance. But then when I had a chance to go back and actually watch the film, I'm like, this doesn't seem like we just cast someone just for the role. And I'm not, just that, the dynamic, you have to understand this. It's like, I don't know if you've ever seen No Country for Old Men, but we remember we interviewed Ellis yes. and he was like, wait a minute, you had a, you have to interact with this psychopath. And to be honest with you, you gotta be a little bit of crazy too, to even go back and forth with him. So when you're reading the script and you have that responsibility, like your film, your, your part of the film is usually, it's, it's not at the end, but it's sort of, it's, uh, what I'm trying to say is here, you have such interaction with the supposed killer how do you, what, what does your mind go to even get in the character? No, I think, I think for me, it was really just trying to, 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 to balance his performance versus mine. You know, as much as he tried to push back, I try, I try to give the same sort of energy, not going to be pushed around. Uh, of course, being respectful, I'm, I've, got my, I've got my wife there, and, you know, his wife there as well. I'm in that social setting. But, uh, but really, you know, I was able to lock eyes with Tom and, 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 and that in that character and really just try to peer into him and, and, and not, and not take it, just kind of, kind of give it back. That's dangerous. Locking eyes with us. Like locking eyes. I was about to say that. What's wrong with you? What's wrong? Don't do that. You might not let go. Look like a shark right in the eyes. <laughs> Don't do that. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Don't do that. <laughs> um, I have like a series of pre planned questions that are going to be for everybody. Uh, but before we get into the, like the production, the final thoughts on the movie, uh, Jared, what, 
uh, I wanted you to talk about the like producing a movie because the 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 awesome location downtown, the first house for the partridges, then the hurricane, then the actual house for the partridges, like. Can you talk about how we didn't have a, a big budget? We barely had a budget. So this was this was financed on favors and just you got some faith now, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, I just can you can you talk about that? What like that process before we get into the production itself? Oh, absolutely. When um, I it's funny like working on a few movies since Kill. It's always been amusing to see people talk about. Um, like how we had everything planned. Like we had a whole marketing campaign planned before we even set action. So we already kind of had like an opportunity that people knew something was coming. But when the script went out, when we got all the um, actors involved and, and cast, you know, cast and crew, it seemed like people were just excited about being involved in it. But producing wise, especially it was my first time ever producing and being an executive producer, and the whole picture, it was kind of like, a lot was just me uh, watching a lot of videos on YouTube um, <laughs> by preparing, like, what do you do? And then uh, the year before, um, or months before this, when I started, you know, became a uh, third man entertainment, I watched a lot of Entourage. So I would always channel a lot of Ari Gold. But to be honest, I have to say it's one of the, even the insanity of disasters and as we call it, the kill curse and everything happened, the most amazing thing I would always see with Durden is we always had a backup plan. And that backup plan normally meant right there on the spot thinking. Like when we were at the, on day two, when we lost the sound guy and everything and, and um, Tartino came and, and, and helped out and took over that situation like a badass he is. I remember one time there was a situation someone couldn't show up. And Durden was kneeling down with a pen and paper. And people were like, well, walking. I'm like, no, leave him alone. Because I could see he was like in this element. So directors and creators like that make it a lot easier to be a producer. And then even having someone like, you know, a Travis on set where, oh, hey, by the way, I just walked um, this uh, subdivision of San Marco and I got this house and I got that house. It's like like having people like Travis and, and a, a, a crew that, they didn't just come in and do what they, they would, they did everything. And there was no, I mean, you're, you're right there. When you talked about when Travis wasn't there, it was felt. And it made like, mm -hmm. I mean, cause I think it was like one or two times I couldn't be there cause I had little guy the weekend or something, but knowing there was a Travis there, um, you know, it, it made it a lot easier, but in the sense of when problems came, cause I'm always about not having problems, having solutions. You know, one of the things I always tell people, specifically you as a director, I give, I said, there's times I would go up to Durden because the films before this, you kind of, you know, it was just like friends or it was like a small crew or cast. I said, there were times I'll go to Durden and go, hey, do these background guys know about what's going on? And you would go, no, and I would take care of it. And there was times I noticed I'll go up to you and go, do they know what's going on? Oh, you need to go talk to them. Because my goal was also to kind of push you out of that element of just, directing to convey, but I also, I, I learned you pretty fast in a sense of how you work. Like that time, the second day of production, you're in this element where no one else was around and you you were able to work out like three scenes. We're supposed to film a week in advance and you made it all happen there. Like that that bathroom scene with Thomas, you know, and, and we're all, in, you know, with, that's like everything was happening so fast, but it's like, because we'd have we'd have time to prep for some of these these shots and locations, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, as a producer, it um it was just a whirlwind. But I learned so much, and, and it's created such a high standard. You know, like you know, we're all, like we always said that you know our goal was to raise the standard. And I I can boldly say from friends I know in Jacksonville who are directors and writers, because of what we did, I know they have taken it to the next level because of we, we created the standard. And that's, that's to me is one of the most powerful things I've experienced that something I was part of and created and touch and, and a lot of behind the scenes stuff that was going on that only the three of us as in real during, we were like one of us who knew what was happening or wasn't happening. And then how it, like we made a decision like, okay, you know, we just moved with it. So that, that uh to me, that, I think that's the most important thing and not just producing, but just, 
and life in general, because if you have an attitude like, oh shit, this, the sky is just open up. I'm like, okay, well let's go find some shelter and keep filming. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And I know we got to get into your questions. Two things real quick. Jo- Joseph, I'm coming right to you, but Travis, I don't know if you can hear me. I just wanted to tell you this. I was going to mention it earlier. And uh, there was, we interviewed, who did we interview earlier that gave him such a compliment uh, on uh, someone's oh, it was, uh, uh, Lady Sasha. Lady Sasha. She well, said, what did I just watch? The, the, yes, the, one of the people, the, the, while she had some colorful things to say about the film, she loved their She's like, whoever did the makeup and the hair, oh my goodness, I love it. I was like, oh, he's going to love to hear this shit. So we'll make sure you see that in the interview. <laughs> she, was, so, she was very surprised to hear that it was a man, but a straight white hair. man. She was like, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> talking talk nice. about the world of identifying. So, yes, no, uh, Joseph, uh, what, what I wanted to ask you was this because you said something that I found to be very true, and I'm, I'm going to jump, uh, say it, and then let you answer it. In that same feeling you spoke of earlier of going on set for the first time and seeing cameras and seeing people doing things that I, I experienced that years ago on a, a film set in Tallahassee, Florida. And and to me, it's the best drug known to man. They don't sell this on the street. They don't, they don't, this, you can't pick this up. You can't borrow this from anybody. When you, no matter whether you're a writer, director, actor, painter, fireman, jan, jan, sana, jan, sanitation work, it doesn't matter. Everyone has a passion for something. So let me ask you this. How do you cope with, a, even Jared brought this up, you experienced this and then you want it more and you don't always get it. How have you uh, dealt with experiencing that high and going forward, trying to recreate that, if not raise the bar, as Jared just mentioned, from that point? Well, I have not been able to do any other future films or any independent films at all, but but I've been able to scratch that itch a little bit by participating in some of the local film festivals here, like the LOL or the 48-hour film project. So okay. um, the last couple of films I worked work with the, pretty much the same crew and cast, so there's been that familiarity with that as well. But it's always exciting to to walk on there, seeing a new seeing a new script, um, just, the, just the whole day or days that we do to shoot and, and all of that. So... Um, Although it's not quite the quite the, and I, I heard Durden say not not a big budget or no budget film, but 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 but, but even those are on a on a very tight shoestring, and, and obviously the forty hour film project is just hey, got to go, got to shoot, got to move, got to go, got to go. So there's not a lot of time to really kind of sit back and and take the scene and figure it out and do it through three, three, four, five times to try to find the quote magic in there. Sometimes you just got to shoot and go. So. Um, you know, I keep I keep putting myself out there, looking looking for other opportunities to, to be uh, to, to be back on on in film, and and until then, I just do some stage work, which is nice because you get that instant gratification every night from the from the audience. Where film, obviously, you might not see anything. Oh man, you were so good in that! Well, I, I shot that eight months ago. I don't I, I barely remember it. So you know, or that night. So give me a, give me one second. Let me right. go reset. We're doing our we're doing our last reset, and then Dirt is going to bring us into questions. But while we're here, I just want to say it's good to see you guys. I mean, Jeff, Travis. Joe, I mean, this this is fun doing this, man. Like I say, we we really said we like it's nowhere we're gonna we're, we're in season three of our show. And we said we're not gonna finish the show without doing a kill review. We can't be here for quick and <laughs> review all these movies and not how people review ours. Dude, halfway through your question, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I see that. Yeah, what the heck, man? I, yeah. So anybody that knows me knows I'm a fiddler. And um, there's like a spiral notebook metal thing that was down here. I was fiddling with it. It is it is deep in my thumb. I can't pull it out. Like I, it's so deep, I can't. I'm pull- Jacob. Jacob. <laughs> what happened? I can't pull it out. It, it hurts. It is very deep. <laughs> you know what? You feel it going in? I did. It it, it it went. It popped and it went in so fast. And then uh, you'll hear it on the microphone. I'm, I'm confused. There was a, not bleed. There, there was a little. Oh, I'll bleed when it comes out. There's a little oh, like that. As soon as it went in, I went. Oh, and I was like, oh, shit, that's actually, I promise well, really, you. Never- I, what did I tell you? I told you don't mention the kill curse. What did you no, do? No. You did, you What's did. the first thing you said? What's the first you- thing you said? So no one's died. But no, fuck that. He's asking for, he did, he pulled this shit in Selma. We went and filmed the Whoa. Selma series and he, oh, I almost cut my finger off my drone. Like, dude, I'm the actor here. The fuck's going on? So <sighs> shit. Okay. Are you fucking kidding me? Get the fuck out of here. You, no, no, oh. no. Is that there, from um? Is a, that is it? Uh, wow. Dirt, dirt oh, it just just pour some whiskey on it. You all right? Uh, just put a little fucking whiskey. You're good. Yeah. Good gracious. Oh, it hit me. All right. Sorry you to remember, take us off track. Well, why, why you're why you're tending to that real quick? I do want to say, hey Joseph, um, so, I was uh, every time I see your performance, you I'm blown away. But also, I can't believe that was your first time, um, in a film because 
you not only were professional, you literally came out there and knocked out the park <laughs> where you really became that character, which was not the easiest character, especially first time filming to do. So thank you for your due diligence and everything. Thank you, Jared. I appreciate that. That means, that means a lot. Absolutely. Thumbs up. Joseph. No, seriously, Joe. You're going to be I blood brothers you. right there. Royal, be blood right. brothers right there. Go ahead. Cut your... <laughs> Everybody's worried about COVID. I'm still worried about hepatitis. Fuck that. No, <laughs> um, no but I'm still That's a good point. Yes, That's a good you. point. So, no, Joseph, I can echo what they said seriously, dude, because I, no matter how good the script is without the talent, and I tell people is there's no small roles, there's just small people. And if you think you can have one word or no words, you really have to give it your all. And I haven't, I haven't always been a lead or anything like that. I've started mm -hmm. out being craft services and just learning. And that's the one thing that I did on that set that I was telling you guys about in Tallahassee, which was I got there and I just didn't become an actor. I became a sponge. Who is this guy? What's a gaffer? What's this equipment? And it learns you. It's like you're going on a golf course. Are you going to go with one club? Or are you going with the bag? Life is a golf course. I'm not going to go up there with my, my four wood or whatever you call it. Are you back? Uh -huh. you know and also, saying? I want to say, and also real quick about that role. I want to say also to Jeff, because Jeff auditioned for the role that Joseph got. And this here's another thing that, and here's another thing. I remember I was all about team Jeff straight up. And I'm like, He's got he's it. Like, he's telling the truth, he's Jeff. Got he's telling it. the truth. And I'll never forget when Joseph came in. I'm not joking. This is what happened, guys. I sat there. Uh, and I went, shit. Like that. Because uh, just how he did. But what I what I love to say about you, Jeff, in the sense of your professionalism, a lot of people, even the largest, smallest city, can become very petty and say, fuck that. But what you did is like, no. And again, because I, you know, we created parts for everyone who auditioned, you nailed what you, I mean, you nailed your part, man. Like you, and again, I, I, the professionalism on this set was, it blew my mind again, knowing what I knew that, because no one really knew that. Jeff, you and I knew that. Joseph didn't know that. But the fact that everybody acted and reacted the way they did to do their job blew my mind. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Jeff and Joseph. Yeah, it was it was neat, um, and and that's one of the things that you know as an actor that you'll you'll do to where you have sides you audition for it, and you know maybe those sides actually get used in the final movie. In this case, it did. So then you get to see the version. It's like, yeah, and you can look and go, yeah, that's not me. You know that <laughs> I was close to that, but this is better. This I see where the choices are, and then there are some occasions yeah. where you know you you get bitter and you're like, well, that was a choice. And this was not yeah. one of those where I was like, no, I, I completely see it. And then I'm like, and I also have this. And that's the that's the part that you guys were, I think, I don't know if that was initially the, the full plan, but you you built Jacksonville. You built, you know, like it, it was made for the people who came in, you were giving back. Um, and and I, I think that part's pretty awesome. You know, it, it's... Yeah. Yeah. I just thought that was cool. There is one other small thing. Um, remember when we were doing the, I guess it was kind of like the clue cards of uh -huh. uh, the, the promo of the characters. Um, yeah. So I think you, Durden, you might've just got attacked by mine because it was a fork with a wire on a string. <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, ah, yeah. That's right. He's done this too. <laughs> Of all the people to be here to witness it live, too. That's, that's fantastic. It really was the kill curse. And it was this is the one hands. I had. Love is love. Love is love. We've, we've done almost 50 episodes, and you wait till now to stick something through your finger in front of everybody. <laughs> I didn't do and it. And Royal, we know why because what you said earlier. I'm not. It has say. to be. He, he just said he didn't do it on purpose. Was it an accident? Yeah. No, it was totally an accident. Uh, tra Travis uh, Thomas is still working with the uh, flip phone. That's why he couldn't be here. Well, so. we're going to be doing his interview uh, in in studio. Yeah. Okay. Well, well I just mentioned him too. Like, where are you at, bro? So. Oh, he knows. He'll be here. No, wait, turn that tomorrow morning. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes, he will. He ain't doing yes. nothing. Like, Come on. Like, what? So, so, tell him what you're going to go into. What kind of questions we're going to going to do here? So, and Jayla, hold on. I'm sorry. Jayla, feel free. Where's she at? Uh, Never mind. She oh, she, no, she's, no, she's she, there. She knows the oh, there. There. She, heard, she was waiting on her name. I knew it. Oh, I love you. At least you're ready. Camera ready. When that camera comes on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead now. Thank you, because we're going to need her for this. 
Okay. Yeah. This is, these questions are for everybody. Anybody that wants to answer that everybody doesn't have to answer everyone, of course, but just if you have something that you want to share from each question, please feel free. And we'll just you know, go in no, no particular order. We'll just be uh, nice to each other. And whoever starts talking first, they have the floor. Um, the first one I have is uh, when you first saw the movie, uh, what what was the experience like as far as the premiere goes, and what was your what was your first impression of the movie? And in that, I would like you to include one thing that you would that it, like you have to change something about. I'm going to kill someone this Friday. Oh, what what is that going to be? That's a loaded question. But go ahead, guys and gal. I guess Don't I'll be shy, Jeff. Don't be shy, Jeff. Oh. Go. Everybody counted to four and then went at the same time. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. My, my first impression was that the, the the turnout was crazy. We had so many people there for the film. It, like it gave me goosebumps. Just all the hard work we put into it. All these people showed up to share this moment with us. It was great. And honestly, I wouldn't change anything about Kill. I think it was it was perfect. You know, I it was a, a great time in my life that I think about all the time. So you have to you have to change something. He would change you asking uh, him about the question because he doesn't. Don't make me do it. No, <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay, well, okay, I would, I would, um, I would go back and reshoot the scene on top of that. I don't know what building we're in at the very top where we had the AC going the whole time. I would turn that AC off. That's what I would do. So yeah, that's where all my sound students at. There, he just gave you forty thousand dollars of advice. You don't have to go to full yeah. sale anymore. <laughs> Turn off the AC. And if you're yeah, ever on the, the of a production and you hear somebody say, we'll fix it in post, I want you to walk up to them, post tape, and smack them in the fucking mouth. Punch them in the face, yeah. It's Tropic yeah. Thunder, oh. Tropic Thunder. <laughs> yeah. Yes. There you go. Are we, we are going to take a lot of shot, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one shot, right. Um, I, obviously, for me to be able to, to go to a premiere, a red carpet premiere, walk in, uh, stand up there next to people like uh, like Royal and and uh, Jared and Jeff and all these people that were there. Uh, Tom, just to guess, just I remember I remember just the, the the buzz that was in the room. Also, I also think maybe the weather was kind of maybe uh, for that night was either rainy or big storm, and thought maybe we might not be able to do the premiere. We weren't sure, um, but and there uh, was but, a, and there was a bomb threat. Oh, oh, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so, <laughs> so, so, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So that was, so obviously I really, really enjoyed that as well. Uh, as far as the movie, what I would change is probably the, the, the scene, the scene with Pat at the table. I would probably would have made that a little longer, probably. Uh, but I would have been. <laughs> hey, <laughs> just, yeah. Is that the wrong with that? Hey, you're going, I enjoyed you're it. You're going places, kid. You got the spirit. I, I enjoyed it. Like, I was, I enjoyed that. He was 20 minutes away from becoming the killer of the film. 20 more minutes to take with Thomas. He was going to kill someone that night. Yeah, That's what yeah. that was. Going I know you say I know you said it as a joke, but I yeah I could I could definitely have used more yeah. uh, interaction between the, the you the two yeah. couple at that table. Well, it, was, it was a nice antidote. Of course, my family, especially my mom, were really excited. I'm doing my first film. What's it called? And I'd say I'm going to kill somebody this Friday. Well, well I, I know you're going to do that, but what's the name of the film? That, that's what it's called. <laughs> oh my goodness! I, I work for a nonprofit, so basically, you don't make money. Yeah, it, it made it <laughs> exactly, made exactly. Uh, it made reaching out to people about the movie very easy because I never put any context in the email. It would just be subject. I'm going to kill someone this Friday. I'm going to kill somebody when, this Friday. Yeah. When you get an email with that subject, you better open it and see what it's about. Either reporting you to the police or watching the film, one or the other. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and actually, Durden, I, I think the very first email you sent me. Um, had that subject line on there. Of course, I knew what it was. And then you went to like this one little paragraph about saying, hey, thanks for coming in. Sorry, blah, 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 blah. And I read the whole first paragraph thinking I didn't get it. And you went, oh, just kidding. And then you then you, then you made me the offer for the film. So uh, so I, right away, I got your right right away, I got your vibe, like right away. So that was good. So. <laughs> that's, I, I totally forgot doing that. But yeah, that checks out. <laughs> I, want, I want to check, check the uh, teenager's mind, see how fast they are with these phones here. So Jayla, why don't you tell me your favorite scene from the film? My favorite scene from the film would have to be the hallway scene with me walking down the hallway. It's not even me just walking. It was the look. It was the look. That was my favorite scene throughout the whole. You are your father's daughter. <laughs> I'd have to say my favorite scene. 
I mean, she won't. I mean, hell, what was your favorite? That was, that was my favorite scene. <laughs> <laughs> so the only time. thing that could beat you on screen. Well, I was, that was in a it. proud papa moment. Emma was looking at me. <laughs> Jayla, hold on, Jayla, give him, the, moment, give, him, give him the wink. Give him the wink. Give him the Brie wink when she walks down the highway. Give him the Brie wink. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. Bam. That's the effing trailer. Okay. Oh, no. Poppy Thunder again. Yes, Jeez, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Jeff, what would you, what would you change? I would say the only thing I would probably up the red herring aspect because. Oh, wow. I don't. I don't think that 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 uh, her character was obvious as it. But I still feel there could have been more where the audience would be like, "Wait, just just to to, to aim lean into that from all of the characters." Not you know, not I'm not saying just for Brody. Although Brody, I do feel had it with him talking about the guns and this and that, and just kind of giving that little anecdote. So you wrote it in there. But I don't know that it made it quite to the screen. But then again, sometimes you got to go subtle. But I think I would have gone a little bit harder with that, you know, with yeah. all of the characters and pushing their their. I honestly would have said their offness even more. Now I don't think I would have asked the actors to do it more. I just don't know how to get that. So that'd be the only uh, no. I completely identify that with that because that was uh, we were talking about that earlier. That that was one of the dilemmas that we faced was trying to find that balance of not giving too much away, not spoon feeding, but mm. giving them enough to chew on to uh, create their own theories. And that was, yeah, I agree. I don't think we always nailed the, the I don't think we always nailed that balance perfectly. And, but in fairness, no, have we flipped the narrative. You're not wrong, Jeff, because other people outside of us who are not involved with the film have given that criticism. Had we flipped the narrative, people would have been like, well, you know, it's so taboo. It's so, it's so what they do. I saw it coming a mile away. So it's like, while you can't please everyone, it's like at a certain point, once you put in the work, you go for what you feel is a great film. But I agree with you guys. I would have loved to see, and even though it's my, we've talked about this personally, the certain characters be delved into a little bit more. But then, hey, it's just what can you do sometimes? Something's always going to wind up on the cutting room floor. And that's why I love film. It's like, OK, next time I get the opportunity, I don't care if I get two seconds. They're going to fucking remember me for life. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, making an independent film is not all glitz and glamour. <laughs> There's, uh, you know, the red carpet looks all nice. We take the pictures, we put them on Instagram. It looks like, you know, we, we did this big thing. But Jared, tell everybody about the afternoon that created this event. <laughs> <laughs> Who has a crow? Oh my God. <laughs> what was that? Who has the bird? What in the oh, world that, is that? The curse is Jeff, Jeff's on mute. Jeff's on mute, so it's not Jeff. Okay, so <laughs> um, before we uh, even started production, I had I already saw like everything in my head. I saw the distribution. I saw the the red carpet event. I like saw this in my head. The day of was very emotional because there was a certain person that was involved in um, hosting it. That things went awry afterwards, but. It consisted of me going and buying some alcohol at, uh, I think, Costco or something like that, and thinking maybe I bought too much. <laughs> and then Durden picking me up um, off Atlantic near Girvin, us driving to Phillips Highway to pick up the banner, then going from there to... Um, Bull City Brewery, where literally there's a picture of me sitting passenger side with beer this high, and I, I can't even do anything. Then us parking illegally in front of the library, the, the one of the side entrances, and then we saw something there. It's like, huh, someone has a box, and then we're unloading, and then the, the library is like, oh, that's a possible bomb. There was a bomb threat. <laughs> so this is where Dern and I were like this. We're, we're carrying stuff in. And like, oh, well, there might be, he comes out, it's like, oh, there might be a, there's a bomb threat. They might not, you know, we might have to close and not do this. I go, <laughs> what? And I just ignored yeah. it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we looked at each other. We're like, yeah, that's, that, that checks out. That's about yeah, right. Yeah, that's what? about, that's about right. right. There, and then we go no in there. No one told me this. And then the uh, the backdrop uh, that looked so beautiful on people's Instagram and Facebook, um, they donated it for the event, which was nice. 
because of Adam Madrid's hookup. He 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 set it up for this the company. But so we're I'm putting it together. They're just doing something over here. I'm over here, and they forgot like five screws. And like, oh, we forgot to put in the bag. And it's like, okay, of course. So it's like right before, you know, people got there early because it was, uh, first of all, it was the um, first official Jaguar game Thursday. It was raining downtown and there was a shrimps game. And we still sold out, you know, 400 seats. But when we get done, Dur and I go back behind the stage and we're in our little dressing room changing. And I'm already like, I'm already ready to go home and go to and go home and drink my scotch and watch the movie. And just like, it was so crazy. Then when the doors open and the people came in, like one of my favorite moments of that is only looking at this, this insanity of people. And then when it's like opening the doors where uh, people are screaming because they couldn't open the door. I remember Dirt and I think you were yelling or that's like back up. And it was so insane backed up that day where I didn't even get a drink at my own premiere. But what blew my mind was, again, it's just like the movie itself. Make, going, so much goes into making it. And it's the same thing as this. But the whole point of that was to give everything back to everyone who was involved in the film, but also to show this is how it should be. Cause mm-hmm. you know, like Joseph, when you said to experience that, it's like, even when we did the table reading, people were like, I've never had a table reading like this, you know? And I, and, and I haven't had a premiere since like that either. Um, but, it, but I think people don't understand what goes into the behind the scenes, but during I, like, again, it, it, everything came to like the reality of that whole production. Like, Oh, there's a bomb mm-hmm. threat. We might have to shut down. Yeah. Okay. And we just did yeah. our thing and no one knew the difference. Well, I mean, at that point, there's things that you can control and things you can't control. And like, and like you mentioned earlier, you know, when you said that there was a an actor didn't show up or there was a scene change or something and dirt on the ground, trying to figure out the next scene, you have to, you have to, you have to move forward. You have to, mm-hmm. if you don't, you'll never right. complete anything, whether it be a film life, whatever I was, I love the motto always forward, always yeah. forward. Right. You know, yeah. it's nice. My, my, you know, when your life is a series of hurdles, like everybody's is, you just like that. That's your option. You either figure out a way to get over it or what you're stuck there. Like that's, that's, it's ridiculous. Right. Um, I want to ask two more questions that are about the movie that'll kind of sum everything up about the production. And then before we go, I just want to catch up with everybody about what, what, what you're up to now. Um, and any advice you have to offer is or just be thinking about that. But for Kill, um, it's a two-parter, and I'd love if everybody could answer this one. Um, what is your favorite memory from the production? And then the second part is, what was the most challenging part? Or was there ever a moment where uh, patience was tested? I, I want because I, I, I want to paint the full picture for people that are interested in making films i don't want them to just get like you know the happy side of it i want them to understand like because there were moments where we had headaches we were hungry we were tired we were at each other's throats it was there were some great moments that we produced something great but also want want to want to balance that out with the other side of it too when we were challenged and how we overcame that well I'll, i'll start if you don't mind um one of the one of the neat things I enjoyed was was watching the as as we as we sat at, in, in Chamberlain's and, and got set for that scene. Um, typically, as a stage actor, and obviously that's all that I had. You you're you're working with these people for weeks and weeks and weeks, and and honing the lines and and picking up on the nuances and and and, and organically finding things in there to connect with the other person. And, and and so when I walked in there, besides the table read, I really hadn't been around anybody. So. Um, you're, you're basically saying, hey, you've got, you've got a half hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is before we shoot to find some connection with these characters, with these people. And it's going to be on film, preserved forever. <laughs> this is what you're going to this is what you're going to see. So for me, that that was scary. The fact that that typically when, when I walk an opening night of a stage production, I've had hours, countless hours with, with these people and even 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 off stage, just get to know them, who they are. So so for me, that was that was that was the scary part. And, and then big challenging part for me, but then also the magical part. I keep using that word magical. Um, just just seeing the way that scene came together and seeing the light changes and and how the table was set and and it got as it got darker outside and the candlelight and 
how all that. And I, and I kept thinking to myself, I bet this looks beautiful. I bet this looks absolutely beautiful on film. I wish I could see it, but I'm still trying to stay in the moment. But I can just tell based on what I've seen, the way it was set up. I said, because everybody looks right in candlelight anyway. So I said, this has just got to be gorgeous. And I can't wait to see it. <laughs> That's awesome. It was gorgeous, too, oh, by the way. It turned out really well. Give me one second on a reset. Uh, before we move on from you, Joseph, I want you to think about something. I, I, I want the unmagical moment next. <laughs> <laughs> reset. There you, there you go. There you go. Jayla. Hey. Hey, Jayla. Unmagical. I'm embarrassing her, guys. I'm sorry. This is her first time away from home. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, Jayla, you rocked you rocked it out, by the way. And to go back to what you said earlier, I had no idea. I thought that's who you were because you did it so well. And your and your father actually told me that he was working with you for a bit before production. And then to finally meet you like aftermath to seeing you smile without looking like you're gonna kill somebody. I, I was blown away by you and I'm very, very proud of you and what you've achieved and what you're gonna achieve in the future. I mean, if she did if she didn't do the role exactly right. She was gonna get beat when she got home. Oh, he, didn't, wow. he, he wasn't working with her. He was Joe Jackson in her. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> edit, whatever we gotta edit. do. Whatever y'all seen Avengers Endgame. Whatever it takes. Whatever it oh, takes. My <laughs> whatever we gotta do here. <laughs> I think I think Jared's going to get an award. Look at the bloody, oh my! I know what he's bloody socks. Oh my gosh! Okay, and guys, but thank you, guys. Thanks everybody for time. We probably got 10, 15 minutes. We want to let everybody because then we got to go back to work after this. For, oh, hey, hey, <laughs> there we go. You get it, Jared. You get it. Thank Come you. on, Jared. What? <laughs> All right, uh, Joseph. If you uh, if you don't if you don't have something that that you want to put in that part, I, I completely understand. I'm just you know, I, well, I mean, as far as, I mean, as far as unmagical, I mean, it, it was just, it was just, to me, it was a pr pretty, pretty short shoot. It was only, you know, only that, that evening. Um, you weren't around us enough for us to, to be disappointed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what, what did Thomas say to you? What did Thomas say to you when we said cut? <laughs> uh, that was You're in a good. safe place, Joseph. You know, he, said, he said, he said, that was fucking good. That's what he told, that's what he told me at the table. Um, well, but, but no, as I mean, he was I mean, drinking. Well, that's true too, but no, but, 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 but he, but I, I remember like when, when, when we wrapped that scene at the at Chamberlain's, you know, getting a picture with you guys and, and, and just thinking about how well I'd been treated. I mean, not that I had been mistreated anywhere else, but, but, but I, I felt very supported by everybody. I mean, I mean, you know, Travis doing my makeup, I mean, everything, it was just, it was great. The only thing, the only thing I remember having difficult to is when we left there and we transitioned to the house to do the bed scene. You know, it's it's that challenge of trying to stay in character. Although all I'm doing is looking looking at a laptop. So for me, that's sort of the unmagical moment or or whatever was was kind of that having to leave there and go. But then I remember it was either it was either Burton or Jared saying, "All right, and for Joseph, that's a wrap." But it was like, yeah, "Yes, that was Jared." I finally got to hear that. Like, and we're done with Joseph. There we go. And and big applause. Send me out. I remember just oh, I I can't remember driving home. It was just literally like <laughs> that high of just. Wow! There's the Thomas. How we do it. You're, 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 like, real, you're like world just said. World just said you, you, you can't. You can't buy that. You can't. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, what it must feel like for a performer, a rock, a rocker, whatever, to walk out on stage and hear fifty thousand people screaming their name, and it's and it just. I mean, where do you find that? Where do you find that? It's just. I'll be honest with you. That that night was actually kind of unmagical for me because on the way to that's my sister in law's house where we shot that. Okay. It's the first it's the first night of production and you know we're on location at Chamberlain's and that's cool turning a book bookstore into a restaurant but then we're going to shoot at my sister-in-law's house and it's like you know on the way there I'm thinking I bet Steven Spielberg doesn't have to shoot at his sister-in-law's <laughs> house it's like one of those things that, that humbles you and lets you know like hold on now don't get too big you're going to your sister-in-law's house to shoot but you never know when you watch the movie. But that that's like we, we shared that sentiment on the way there. That's, that's why they stopped reasons. making closed caption, Sister's Law's House. It just <laughs> pops up like <laughs> that's all good. But the, Joseph, exactly. thank you so much for that. And uh, Jared, could you could you could you wrap them one more time? Wrap them like you did, Jared. Wrap them. Go ahead. There you go. Everybody, that's Joseph. There's a cut. Surround right there. Woo! Thank you very much uh, for letting me be part of this, guys. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so no much problem. Don't for, leave for, for, for the opportunity. It was wonderful. Yeah, do, do you got sir. a few? Do you got a few moments to stick around for final thoughts? After, uh, after? yeah, but just a few though. Then I got to go. Okay, let's. Let, what, you, you can get final thoughts now. Yeah, any final yeah. thoughts that you have before you want to say goodbye? 
Well, yeah, I feel very spoiled. I mean, if this is, uh, you know, like Jared just said, if this was, if this is what uh, is the exception rather than the rule of how films are shot here. Then I feel, I not feel very spoiled by that. Um, um, I was, I was honored and humbled. I still am by anybody who does want, who does decide to want to work with me. Uh, I, I do try to be professional. I, I do try to come prepared. I try to bring it all. I know I'm not right for everything and that's okay. Um, but, but once I commit to a project, I'm hundred percent in, and I felt all of that from auditions all the way through to, to Jared's. Okay. And that's Joseph. That's a wrap all the way through. I, 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 I felt very, very supported and, 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 uh, I'm so appreciative. I really, really am. And thank well, you so thank much you for being a part of it. Thank you so it. much. No yeah. problem. Tell Joseph what to get before he find the episode. Oh, I'll, I'll get, I'll okay. get into that. Uh, you know, on, a, on my final thought to you is that somebody needs to cast you in a film as Edward Norton's brother because you could <laughs> nail it. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that easily. Only person that wouldn't like that would be Ed Norton because he tried to play his older brother. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, Edward, yeah. He would do that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank Just you so much, Joseph. Thank, Thank you, guys. Care, Appreciate man. it very much. Much love. Right, J- Appreciate right. it. Jayla, we're going to come to you only because I know you got to get back to your studies. Then we're going Jeff, then Trav, and then we're going to finish with the J-Man. Jayla, that means come now. I'm here. (laughs) Yes, thank you. I'm here. I'm right here. You have a sarcasm. I wonder where she gets it from. Camera right here. Look at me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so I would say, like, the best part of everything, well, my favorite part of doing everything as a cast would be the table read, like the first one when we did the table read and then we had the photo shoot because it was just so good to see everybody's um, personalities come to life. Like, especially like that one picture where everybody's like, have has their character like shown on their face. And it's like me, like with no emotion at all. And everybody's like going crazy. This is like really, it was really nice to see like everybody. And then I would say that like the most like, what's the word? Magical. <laughs> yeah, the magical. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ma- the most magical part or like something that was like really like touchy, but I would say was like fighting with the weather. Like during the park scene when we did like the baseball scene, it was like we were there like a I feel like we were there a long time, probably just because it was me. And then also my dad kept telling me I couldn't change my hair because I'm usually used to like changing my hair all the time. And he was like, Jayla, no, you can't change in here for like three months. You have to, you have to keep it in. Yeah, I was like, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can. But yeah, that was about it. Yeah. I forgot about the weather on the baseball day. That sucked. Yeah. It did. It yeah. did. Um, before we move on to the next one, I want to share my favorite memory was actually the scene shooting your school scene. Um, because you made it was I don't wanna I don't wanna say that bringing a shooter into my school made my dream come true, but <laughs> as a as a rebel throughout my school years, always being like the troublemaker and the one that the teachers look at as like the example of what not to do, it was mm-hmm. so cool to do something like that is essentially the epitome of like the ultimate form of school rebellion. <laughs> not condoning it, nobody do that, but it doesn't get any more rebellious than walking into a a, a school with a gun. And I had the I, I had the permission of this of the school the person that taught me tv (laughs) yeah you're you're old school yeah i said it's my favorite memory um that that (laughs) was like the most mad i will say magical that was a magical moment to go back to the school where i took tv production have my teacher help with with organizing extras for that scene and and have their like their grace to say yes come into the school with a gun and shoot this like crazy i never thought that was going to happen and the fact that it did that was like such a surreal moment for me to be back and like working with kids that are in the same class that I took 10 years ago. Now, I can't beat that, but I'll just say this from a, it's a different perspective. It's not only going to take long. It was me. It's all, I used to think my dream was always to, you know, win the Oscar, be the best actor in the world. But I like that, that fails in comparison to filming with your daughter and being in the scene with your daughter. So it's not like a, a skit or some type of short. This is a full lean feature film. And my daughter's the killer. I can't tell. And I'm not even real. So it's like, it's, it's, it's <laughs> crazy. So yeah, right. A spoiler alert. Go see it, guys. And uh, no, but to, to, to be in that. And we're, we're only on scene together for like maybe a few seconds. But it's like, man, you know what? If it, I, like. I didn't even, that's the one time in life I didn't watch me in a scene. Yeah. I watched her the whole time and it's just like, she did it, not me. Like, and so that was surreal. To me, it's still, I'm about to cry, so I'm going to shut up. 
I got a bloody tissue if you need it. No, I'll just take Jared's sample <laughs> for now. So, Jayla, we want to thank you, guy. Jared, could you do me a favor? Could you wrap Jayla yeah. for me? Hold on, wait. Hold on. Before you wrap her. Is that her color? No, this is my mom. Oh, okay. It's Granny Royal, Jayla. Hi, mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 come on. You know what? Epi, why not? Come on, come on in. Real quick, guys. Come here. Come here. Granny. Get in here. <laughs> Jayla said, come in here now. <laughs> I Jayla didn't. said, open the door. I didn't. I didn't open, I'll get it's in here. Open the door. Jayla, they're going to edit that and make you say that. No, nope. they're going to edit yeah. that. Open the door. Sure. Come on in. Say, come say, hey, you say please. Say please. Mama, come say, please. Jayla wants to see my your dress. Please. Come on. Hurry up there. Mom, we're on time. Come on. Come on in. <laughs> say hey to everybody. I no, said you hi. No, you're trying to be funny. All of a sudden, you dressed like you're going to the Oscars or something like that. Hey, Granny. Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, you just done put your little granny down. Why you didn't call me? Oh. Oh, nothing. Damn. Hi, right, Mom. <laughs> she said, hey. Hey. Jayla, you didn't add, I, why didn't you call her? See, because she learned how to work Facebook Messenger. She stopped being FaceTiming me like, 30 times a day. <laughs> Don't even play with me like Oh, I thought she was hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Tell Tarantino to give the key. It's outside. All right. Love you. All right, guys. All right, we got to get back to the show. I say get Tarantino's outside. He'll give it to you. Tell him to give you key. All right. All right. Oh, he's right up there. Right, we got to go. We got to finish. We live. We're on live. We're on, we're on the internet. So, all right. Go ahead and finish up. Um, Jayla, before you go, what, what, what advice do you have for aspiring actors, actresses, artists, and but she's not done yet. Your grandma's still not done yet. The garage. Okay. <laughs> Tarantino's going to give you the key. On the meatloaf. <laughs> All right. So, Jayla, ad- advice to aspiring actors, actresses, and any final words that you'd like to leave us with? Um, any, okay. So, any aspiring uh, words? I would give them just don't be yourself. That's what I would say. Don't be yourself. Don't be afraid to not to not be yourself and step outside of your comfort zone. And any final words, I would say victory over violence. Over violence. I knew you were going to do it. I knew you were going to do it. Bam. Hey, sweetheart, come on. Let's, hold on. Go, you got to come on. Let me see you. Let me go. No, um, not on the camera, Dad. That's going to look weird. Uh, oh, it is going to look weird. Let me see the cue. Let me see the cue. Oh, let me see the cue. That's oh, going to be your fade I, out. What? Oh, yeah. We got tattoos, guys. Is, it, is that the right side? It is. It is. It is. She's it's she's nice. got a queen. She's got a queen. He's got a king. I, I got a new freckle the other day. That's about it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Love you, Jayla. You did great. Love, Love you. you. Thank you, Jayla. That's like Bye, the, the t- Jayla. <laughs> Bye. Bye bye. It's like the title of every Ginger's documentary right there, her biography. I got a freckle the other day. That's about it. The end. Yeah. <laughs> That's about right. That's about right. <laughs> um, who who's next? Travis. What's your uh, what's your favorite memory from the production, and what was the most? Uh, I, I know you've got to have some interesting stories about challenges and overcoming them because you were the one that we go to most of the time when there was a problem that needed to be solved. Um, I guess my favorite part of the production was the pool. I don't know whose house that was, but when Thomas was out there, like completely naked, and jumped <laughs> in the pool with the blood on him. Hold on, you, just, so, then, <laughs> let, let me catch Royal up real quick. Travis's favorite memory from the production was the pool. <laughs> that's why Thomas well, didn't join. That's, that's just why he didn't join us today. If y'all remember, there was a giant, like, um, I well, guess I it was a there. rooster. I missed one day on set and that was front, it. And he, pulled, oh, and he was like completely pool. naked. He put a rooster in front of his junk. And it was just, I have like pictures. I got to find those pictures. I have so many pictures. No, 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 you, you, don't, you don't have to find them. You're good. You don't have to find the pictures. You're good. Yeah, I got they came yeah. to stuff the rooster. Rooster. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and then, I don't know. Um, I don't know, like challenges. Like, it was just, it was us. You know what I mean? It was a group of people that were awesome and cool to hang out with. So, I don't think there was, I mean, there was challenges, but I just felt like everybody just stepped up and did what they needed to do. You know what I mean? Like everybody, like, if there was a hole to be filled, somebody filled that hole. So I don't really know. I don't know if there was challenges to that because everybody just stepped up. So us you know, especially, especially Thomas. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So he stepped up with his junk. Uh, yeah, he was very hesitant to, he, he bought me on that. That was the only, like, usually he is the, he is the director's actor. He's, he's yeah. the ideal person. Well, forgive Thomas for not wanting to do soft porn. 
But <laughs> he knew the script. He knew what the I script didn't write that before, part. But he hey, now, Jared's but, drinking now. There we go. Find his only fans. I'm just saying. Oh, he got he has to October first. He has the hands on the waist of his on his waistband, and that's when he decides Listen. to bring it up that he might take issue with this. Like, why do we have to do this? Like. I'm not going to sit here and explain my artistic vision to you right now. This is uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> whatever you got to tell yourself, man. I just uh, get your dick out and get in the pool. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, it's going to be, out. it's going to. Says it's, every police report when the witness gave their statement. This was in what, like November or something? I don't know. It was, I wasn't, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was He's like, hey, hey, hey uh, Royal, you didn't miss much anyways, so. You know. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. He said, Winnie. <laughs> He said, it's so cold. This is going to be people's first impressions yeah. of, of my penis. Here's it that is. Seinfeld episode. You know, I was in the pool. Yeah. yeah. Drink it. <laughs> all right. That, that, but real quick, all jokes aside, Travis, I do want to tell you, you did a really good job. Seriously. I know you're telling us about the other things, but the makeup job that you did, seriously, you, this was the lady that spoke to us today. She's not the first person to say it. You definitely have a time. You just didn't do makeup. You were cutting hair. You, I know you, you gave uh, Jared a comb over at least two or three times. So, you know, because of the heat humidity. <laughs> hey, so, hey, he hey, he 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 I said comb over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he does have hair. But no, seriously, you do I'm actually thing, back man. in the salon now. So, I'm doing hair again. Where can they, where can they find you at? Uh, I'm at Panache in Julington Creek. Yeah, so anybody that has that just watched I'm Gonna Kill Someone this Friday and was in love with Tracy Newman's hair, you too can go get the star treatment at, you say Minaj? He said Panache. 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 In Julington Creek. Not the one in St. Augustine, the one off of Racetrack in, Road. In Julington Creek. Don't go to the one in St. Augustine. That one's bullshit. Yeah. You're going to get a hack job there. Go to the one. Exactly. Well, there you are go. they all hacking? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Are they yeah, all hacking? We're all hackers. <laughs> <laughs> Hack I the planet, bro. Hack the planet. Hack the planet. You have another question, or no? Um, before, because I guess we're saying goodbye to everybody right. as we do this. So, um, before we move on to uh, Jeff. Jeff and Jared, I want to take one moment <clears throat> to acknowledge the fact that there is at least one person from the crew who couldn't have been here today, even if they wanted to. Uh, Jeff Soto. Dr. Jones, sadly, no longer with us. There's actually a, um, we have a in memoriam clip prepared already that will run right now. And okay, so coming back out of that, uh, before we finish up this question, um, still sticking in the theme of the in memoriam with the score, uh, what it was your, what was your, because I mean, I'll, I'll just start. I, I watch horror films now that are just now doing the kind of stuff that Jeff did with the score for this movie, as far as just the, the different concepts that he had, the, the music itself, the timing of it, um, how different sounds were used to the, the thought that was put into it was so um, it was conceptual in itself. So uh, I was wondering what everybody else's impressions were of, of the score before we wrap it up. But if I can start, because I never got to get my opinion on this really quick, uh, I'll just make it short, make it 30 seconds. I've, I've known Jeff for quite some time, and this is one of those times where I, I think I spoke to you personally. I was just like, I don't know if he, you know, I, I like what he does. I don't know if he'd be right for this. And then you start sending me and Jared snippets. And I was like, he's going to do this. And then when I saw it the night of fully sound and I sat next to him and saw how elated he got, I knew he was the right man for the job. 20 seconds. And yeah, that was right on. Yeah, he was. The sad thing is, is that at the premiere, he was already in the decline of whatever was was happening in, in mentally with him. He was he almost didn't come because he was uh, it was it was already starting to take shape, whatever the fuck was happening. And it, that wasn't even if it, if it was your first time meeting him at the premiere. Sadly to say, you didn't even really meet him. That was uh, that was not the Jeff that I that I had known for over a decade. Um, but it that was like one of the things that really like messed with him was uh, he's always very critic. He's he was his harshest critic. So watching everybody um, respond positively to the movie and a lot of the critiques that were coming in, specifically uh, mentioned the score and how great it was that like that that fucked with him in a almost like a negative way like he did not know how to um uh he, he didn't know how to receive that 
So let's continue complimenting him. Let's make him uh, Jim, uncomfortable. Anything? Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. Yes. I, um, yeah. The I as far as the the soundtrack, if, if that's the where we're we're going to stay, definitely. Um, it it immersed you. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Is it, it made it, it, you? There was no questions that we were in this world, and it, and it did give it that theatrical element. You know, it gave it that. But but at the same time, it wasn't intrusive. That's the thing I hate about a lot of specifically independent film to where it'll be music and then the music and it's just dude stop like we get it you're you're wanting us to be scared you're wanting us to be tense this one just it was just stringing along just that little line that, that you need to have to where you only notice it just just uh i don't know instinctively like it, it and it wasn't minimal either but you know great 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 like I, uh, uh, he, the, the, he, there was a conversation that we had. I'll never forget. It was like a, a Travis. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Travis. Hey, Jay, thank you, here, Travis. Rap, tra yeah, rap trap. He's leaving here. Jerry, rap trap. That's a rap on Travis, everybody. He's not even paying the fuck attention. Thanks, Trav. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking to Brew. Oh. Somebody's talking to the oh, cops, God. looks like, about why he's stalking people. All right, let's um, go. Let's go back to Joe. The, the, uh, <laughs> Oh, he, he said something that was really brilliant to me that I would have never thought to do. He said, um, you know, when we're, what do you think about when I'm putting the score together? If in those moments where you want to go big with it, what if in those moments we go silent? It's like, I'm not talking about like, like quiet. I'm talking about deafening silence. Yeah. And he did that. And it was that I think that changed so much of the movie. It made it it brought the it elevated the movie to a different level and, of like of a sophisticated psychological thriller because it wasn't, it took the, any kind of campiness yeah. away from it. And, and there's this tone, like he did, he went so far as to like research um, a specific tone that CIA would use to make people feel uneasy that they would like play in the interrogation room for hours before they came in. You can't even hear it imperceptible to the ears, but huh. you're like feeling it in your whatever internal rhythm yeah. or whatever. And he he played that for the entirety of the uh, the whole score, the whole entire movie. Wow. That tone is playing beneath the surface, and we actually started playing that tone at the premiere, the moment the doors opened during the right. whole twenty minute intro. That tone was playing to get people in that uh, yeah. state of unease. Mm. Um, yeah, no, it's just the the uh, he, uh, he actually created an instrument specifically for the movie and he called it the uh the modus you know, which is the you know the hammer but it was um it was like this piece of wood that was like really really long and then he had a uh, guitar string that was like strapped to it and then uh plug somehow figured out a way to plug a a, a, a cord to the amp into that and then use the violin bow to that sound that like that that's an instrument that doesn't even exist before this movie Jeez. It's, it's, wow. it's epic man that's what i can say well jeff before we wrap did we get this did we get no, uh, no oh, well, we could we could say we could uh oh well jared what what was what were your yeah. initial thoughts to on the, score, on the score? score yeah um well the the soundtrack itself i mean uh, first of all heart broke when I, I got the news from you uh about everything that happened with jeff but um, I remember um, specifically, it's something I'll never forget. I was on a production at a stunt st uh, studio school outside of Orlando, and it was two in the morning, and the only light was coming out of the barn, and I'm barely in mostly darkness and, and a little bit of light, and you sent it to me, and I actually, for some reason, I had reception on my phone, and I hit play, and I, you know, it's the, the partridge theme. And then I hear, and then I start walking back to the house and it's completely dark. And I hear, kill, 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 kill. And I'm like, so it, it, it already like it ripped into my heart. And then when I heard the whole soundtrack, and especially when we did the, the editing and the, and, you know, the cuts and everything with the music, I've always like, man, Jeff, it's going to be 
like the John Carpenter of, of like even beyond of what, what, you know, his, his style. And it was definitely an honor and pleasure to have his work um, on this film. And, and it's just to this day, um, I'll listen to that music. Like even recently I listened to John Carpenter's new mix for uh, the new Halloween and it's, I mean, it's good, but it's, 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 it's not, uh, it's not what, you know, Jeff did. It's not what he was going to be intended to do. So, but yeah, the he soundtrack me. definitely made it, you know. He spoiled me, Jared. I said, I, I don't want to do movies anymore unless you're creating an instrument for him. <laughs> like, that's the bar. He, how you said we raised the bar for film? When he right, told right, me that, right, story, right. I thought he was bullshitting. And he like, no, he really did. And I, I went back and listened to the sound. I'm like, that's something you cannot recreate. If you hear that sound somewhere else, it was literally stolen from this film. Mm. It's, it, it lives forever, man. That's why I love being an artist. I don't know about you guys, but your writing lives forever. When you leave this earth, your writing's here. My acting's here. You saying, hey, I made this happen without this connection. This doesn't happen, Jeff. You saying, I auditioned for this part, but this is everybody else remembers me for this. Like, we live on, guys. I mean, right. we live on. We transcend time. Um, I'm going to reset the camera real quick and then we can wrap it up. All right, all right Jeff, we're going to wrap you. We're going to need about five more minutes with you. Right. Uh, Don Che, Jaren Char, we're going to need about 10 minutes with you. And we're we're wrapped, right, baby. We got it, man. Martinis. Yeah, you guys, <laughs> you guys are pros. You guys are pros. <laughs> <laughs> Soldier boy, soldier boy. Oh, oh, oh look at J J man. <laughs> uh, don't don't lame me over there. We start dancing like a lame. <laughs> <laughs> no, I leave that to Durden. I leave that to Durden. <laughs> he did that. He did that. <laughs> I know. He, he lives that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna sir. All right. So, uh, Jeff, the, the your favorite memory from the production, and if there is any uh, moment that, of challenge or frustration that had to be overcome. Yeah. Um, favorite moment on, I mean, I, I was on set, I think only one day, if I remember correctly, we were, we were in the tower cool. and oh, it was, tower, yeah. it was, it was beautiful, beautiful. Like just being up there. I'd always, I've lived in Jacksonville all my life. I'm a native and, you know, I've seen that building. I'm like, Oh, cool. You know, I imagine it'd be nice seeing all the way around and you could, and then you add the surreal aspect that we're making a film in it, you know, that there is this AC that everyone is kind of sitting around and waiting and doing nothing for hours because of course you got to wait for this you got to do this and that there you know there's the, that and then there's you know scott broughton doing yoga on the floor and, <laughs> and and then we end up you know in the um in the uh the 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 conference hall and i'm writing bizarre ass poetry you know as this character um it was just a neat yeah like, i forgot about that <laughs> I, I did too until you started saying favorite thing i'm like huh and i'm like wait the rest of that day i wrote that weird ass just stream of consciousness stuff um and, and like just that whole experience was it was just fun like it, there there were moments where it was yeah you gotta wait that's the business and that's the way it is um yeah and then going to things that were kind of like uh, I, don't, I don't know honestly the read-through was I did because there was so much going on. One, you had this whole floor um, of that studio place. Uh, I think they're still around, right? Yeah, yeah, Wonderland, Wonderland. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, there was the photography, and you know, figuring that out. It's like, okay, we're going to do that. Okay, and then you know, there's also let's read, and then and then everyone's kind of taught, you know, sidebarring and talking. So it's just as much social event. And then there was so much of like. Uh, don't worry about this. We'll tell you later. Uh, don't worry about it because because it kept going a little bit longer. And it's like, I know visually we're going to be seeing this and, you know, having a big paragraph explaining what we're seeing. You're like, eh, you don't need to worry about that. OK, uh, <laughs> and we're going to go. And so that was that was tough to follow so much so that at the end, I, I mean, this was my response at the end. I'm like. What? <laughs> well, I guess it's getting made. Okay. <laughs> Because I didn't know what to expect because while you had given us the script, we didn't know what the script was because mm -hmm. those moments that were written but not, not dialogue were so important. And, yeah. and I mean, that's the reality of, of a table read in, in a project like this anyways, um, is that you're not necessarily going to get it. And, and I mean, as a, as a writer, director, um, you you don't necessarily have to say I'm going to put the camera here. Put the you know a lot of people when they read scripts nowadays from books, 
it's going to have the director's notes, the writer's notes, the the cinematographer's notes, and and you you just kind of wrote that in. And so that's where when you're at a table read, it's kind of like, I guess this is going to be a movie. I don't I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, and, I, for, then, I forgot yeah. about that too. That yeah. that we skipped through the uh, that we skipped through the script script but, at the end because it was so important to us. We said we are going if we say we're going to start at this time, we're starting yeah, at this time. Yeah, we say yeah. we're going to have you done at this time, we'll have you done at this time. Yes. And when we started getting through the script, and we were like, "All right, so <laughs> we got to get we got to get through the script, but we also still need to stick to our word and get them out by the time we said we would." So yeah. I, I totally forgot about that. I just yeah. remember me, you, and Jared looking at each other like, "They'll be fine," because we, that was after we had done the overnight session of writing it. We're like, "It's fine. I know you don't know, but we do. Trust us. Yeah. We got right, it." Right, right, right. And, exactly. and the frau, the Fraz, the Frau's Mendow Day at Gresham and Partners. That that's the right, Jared, right? Gresham and Partners. Yes. When we that was that was probably the most challenging day for me for two reasons. One, you're right, Jeff. There was a lot of waiting around, and probably more so that day than most days because that place was a nightmare logistically to shoot in. Beautiful <laughs> yeah. shots, but Shadow it's movie. it's essentially windows and mirrors. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> William like looks at us like, "What the fuck?" But that so on top, but then on top of that, we're on like the twenty second floor. There was like I I I need to like I can't think without a cigarette. I need oh to be God. pacing, uh, smoking. Jared was coming right. down looking at you like, "Have you seen so, dirt?" And I was so like, "We're we're 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 on set <laughs> and on the day that presents the most like challenges yeah. that you need to puzzle out in your brain in a place that I can't just freely have a cigarette. I got to go through security, go down, come back up. That day sucks so bad for that reason, mainly <laughs> because I could not smoke the, uh, at leisure. The drinkers didn't have a problem. <laughs> so um jeff before uh, before you go like is there uh, congratulations on sag i'm sure like i mean being a part of a union uh, guarantee that's like what guaranteed wages sometimes benefits even yeah uh, as long as you get the job <laughs> that's that's always the challenge of it um but yeah it, it is it is great to think of of where i've been and and where i'm going you know, I'm, I, it's a journey and I'm, I'm just glad to be able to say, all right, I'm, I'm stepping a certain way, you know, and I don't feel like, um, anything ever done, uh, hasn't led to, it, you know, mm-hmm. whether, whether good or bad, uh, where I am now and where I will be in the future is, is everything that's behind me, you know, for better yeah. and worse. And, and that's, yeah, I, it, it, it's. When did we do this? What year was it? <laughs> like, it was 1987. It was at least it was at least 26, Wills, 27 years ago. Like, at least. <laughs> it's bizarre. Uh, like I, I think I didn't I have a brown beard then. Uh, that's. I mean, I'm 25 weird. right now. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I was I was 15 when we shot it. I yeah. had to get rides to the set. <laughs> yeah. No, it feels like a decade ago. But I think it was 2017 we shot it. Yeah. 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 But really quick before you go, I think I think this is the last three of us. I just have to ask this because I want to see your face because I know the answer. Have you not just watched stuff on TV since we've done stuff and been like, what the fuck? How is this here? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Right. There you go. That's the that's the response there. Jeff, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out. Um, do, do we know are you gonna put up stuff where people can find Jeff at or if they need to see what anything got going yep, on? Yep, all that will okay. go in the in the descriptions. What what do you have anything that any final words, anything that you want to share, plug, or any advice that you want to give? Um, yeah, no, nothing that I'm plugging right this minute. There, there's a film that'll be coming out, but I don't know if I'm on the cutting room floor, so we'll see. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, just make your damn films, people. Make them. You know, we. I, I'm I'm kind of one of the the hosts of the Jacksonville Film Bar. We just literally let people in. Right now, we exist only on Zoom. But I mean, we're just literally a group for people to come around and just say, hi, you know, I want to go do this. I have a cell phone. You know, is there anyone who I can talk to about a script? You know, help me with formatting, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, go be, be social and safe and just get your film done. You know, be, be willing to do it. Is it going to be shit? Probably. That's fine. Whatever. Like, get it done. And then... You're going to get progressively better and better and better. And you're going to fall in love with it more. That's the more important part. And 
give it out. You know, don't, don't just keep it to yourself. Like, you know, allow it to go out there. There are going to be people who are going to hate it. There are people who are going to love it. And you optimistically are going to love it. You're going to have your kid and put it out there in the world and it's going to grow and blossom and become whatever, you know, it, it may not become what you want, but that's fine. Um, yeah. Like go do. So that's what I would say to everybody. I appreciate <laughs> that. Nice. I, want, I do when, because you put that out there, I just, I do want to, I want to offer the counter to that as an introvert. Um, I stop, stop inviting me. Okay. Uh, this is for, this is, I mean, I'm speaking on behalf of other introverts because I'm sure it's not in the vein of like creating, writing, directing. I'm sure I'm not the only introvert that um, absolutely is, it just hates the idea of going out into a group setting and, and for anything, including uh, involving film. I definitely see the benefit of that because I've seen great things come out of that group. The the collaborations that that group has brought people together and what has come out of those collaborations. Um, I don't really know where I'm going with this other than I feel like there needs to be there needs to be an alternative for the people like me that like there there needs to be a way to network without having to have an anxiety attack. Well, he said they're on Zoom now, so he'll see you guys soon. No, no. <laughs> that's, that's, still, that's still interaction. It's not face-to-face. It's still, you know, I get, I have to prepare mentally and emotionally for two hours for a 15-minute phone call. That's not even yeah. seeing somebody. That, that, that is true. I've seen I, it. It's true. I, honestly, you're you're right. And, and you know, Royal, kind of to your point, you, you, you've, you've hit something that we're doing like no matter what we're on zoom right now, because that's just the way it's got to be. But we've already started deciding that at least once a month, no matter what, we're going to have a zoom thing. Now, now, you know, Durden, if you're saying it's, if that's too stressful, Hey, get on a forum and, and clicky, click, clicky, cause then you Ready. can control your stuff, you know? And I, I mean, even, even on our, our film bar stuff, if you have a question and if you want to do it that way, like if it's a place where, you know, people are going to be looking, go there, but yeah, Reddit, and, you know, and all of those, um, the Cinejax, yeah. I mean, we, we of course have those, but, um, yeah. you know, it's, I, I just, yeah, I really challenge. just wanted to put that out there is like, you know, if there, if somebody is not showing up to your things, it's not because uh, I, I don't want it to ever be perceived as like, uh, oh, I'm better than that, or I'm right. too good for that, or, or that's like, it's nothing about that. It's always, it's a, most of the time, at least in my, it's about the per- person. Like I can do, I, I feel more productive on my own. Like yeah. I know it's a, it's a communal experience at the end of the day, but uh, in a group setting like that, I'll, uh, most of the time what I'm thinking is man, what I, how, how much faster I could be do- going if this was just myself in a room. <laughs> you know? uh, and that's not the case for everybody, right. but yeah, I just I, I wanted to put that out there for uh, What's out there? clear the air. <laughs> They're going to play this at their next movie. Guys, this is how most of the community feels and go. No, Chase, um, <laughs> you know, Chase, uh, Chase Campo, Chase Capo. Yeah. yeah. He reached out to me. He's like, why don't you, why don't, you know, ever come to the uh, film bar Mondays? And somebody else, I can't remember his name, but the, uh, the other one. I'm like, I just, you know, 10 years ago, it was uh, Martini Shop Mondays. Yeah. Um, down at uh, like Ninth and Main and Boomtown and downtown Jacksonville, uh, back in like 2004, 2005. There's always been like a social group that well, I, I don't. I just I, I don't identify. It's with. okay, man. It's okay, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I just yeah. okay. I'm gonna get us some help, guys. Don't yeah. you? <laughs> Well, and, and that's and that's where I say, yeah, you you're making your damn films. <laughs> that's the thing. You make your damn film. You are. If you're, and, if you're not going to show up, at least show up with a film. But the <laughs> but the but the bad part about that is is that when it comes time when the movie is done, like I don't want to alienate the people in the community that are going to be the ones that are interested to see an independent film. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, oh, he came out with another one. He's too good to come to our meetings, but he wants us to come to his premiere. Yes. Yes. <laughs> not not that I'm too good to come to your meetings, but yes, please still come to my premiere. You need to come singly here. Well, and that's that's where I would I would say show up to other people's premieres. That's the only thing ever. That's the only thing ever. You know, show up to everybody's premieres. Don't bother with the, the meetings and whatever, because I get it straight even as a host, I have moments where I'm like, all right, everybody, I've got to go to the bathroom now. And I'm just going to lock myself in the room and just breathe for about 20 minutes because 
I mean, we get a lot of people coming and going and going in this and that. And I'm like, all right, I can't, I can't for a minute. I got to take a step away. Yeah. I, I am, I am one. I am an introvert who is an actor. <laughs> I know, know the feeling, sir. I know the feeling. <laughs> you know, I can put the face on, but but it that. It so in, in short, you're a self saboteur. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> the yeah. saboteur, the saboteur. Um, but yeah, I mean, no matter what, get make your films, people. You know, that's that's that would be my word, I guess. Yeah, right. that's that, that's perfect advice. As long as on a bumper sticker, just do it. All right, Jeff. <laughs> so Jeff, Jeff, we want to thank you really so much for coming in today. So we will be uh, following up with you. You'll get the information on the episode when it will drop, and of course, we'll all be in the live chat. So tell your friends, family members to come on out. We wish you nothing but the best. Please stay healthy. And hey, good luck with the union. And hey, hey, give them hell, man. Yeah, thanks. All right. That's Take a wrap for Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Skynet, baby. Skynet secure. All right. All right we're and here. the three amigos oh, no. return. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this shit. Why the hell has this film sold? God damn it. <laughs> Whose fault is it? <laughs> it's Dante Jarentrod's fault. All three. Yeah. All three. All right. Oh my god, I would say you guys are kicking ass, man. I'm so proud of y'all what you're doing with your show. It, it's it's really insane to you know be a creator and then one day you are literally like on this side talking to creators that you followed your whole life. And also just especially specifically Durden or David, since we're off air, I can call you David. Um knowing exactly your passion and love for some of the people you've had on there. And, and then I love the fact that you brought up and I, and you can tell I've grown because I didn't say shit about uh, Mondays, film bar Mondays. I was like, uh, 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 but uh, yeah, but the thing is the anxiety is real with you. And I think it's interesting that you brought that up that I, you know, the anxiety of going to a place where you don't want to impress, you just want to do your thing. But the night before you're talking to, you know, Nolan's BFF, like where's that separation of like because that's that's, uh, that's a very surreal thing you know he was one of our first guests wasn't he no one's yeah. First, uh, yeah i think the difference between our interviews and, and something like a film bar monday is um almost like it's the same thing when we're on set if i'm the director it's like i i have the controller in this situation i can stop it whenever i want to and it's okay. much like the same thing with the interviews. They're coming to my playground. I'm not going to theirs. That's true. And it's a little bit more secure. It, it's, it's you, if you think it's surreal to watch him, imagine me being here and him freaking out when he has these people. And that's when you realize I never thought him would be of anyone fake. But again, we're living a childhood dream here. These people don't know us for Adam. And they all right. say the same thing. And they all are like work ethic. And and they all what, what what do we have? Some people say, I don't even know why I came to you guys' show, but I'm glad I came. And I and I told them this, I don't want to just do this show. If it's just gonna be us, you know, reading shit offline. Like, no, we need they need to know that we're authentic. I'm an actor, you're a director, we both write, we know about film, but mm -hmm. more than remove all that. We fucking love film. They and they right. see that when we're talking about it. And it's it's I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of fucking hard work, Jared, but it, it pays oh, off, man. I, I know it is, and it's even harder than most people realize. Like you talked about the day be the day of the premiere. Mm -hmm. Um that was a lot of work, but it was a year into that that led to that. But you guys just sound like, oh, we have in six months for interviewing, you know, freaking Ari from Midsummer. It's like, the, the I mean, and it's like the the and as always, David, you're you're up so much with this market, and it's like everything from Kill, and it's like kind of like the whole preparation is, and we're all like the banter you have. It's it's kind of funny. It's almost you're walking in, and you're you. But and, and I also can tell the acting you and then the kind of like, oh, what the fuck did you say? Like poking the bear. And what I, I love also about the banner you guys have is where when you're prepared, where he's like, oh, you read it. And then, <laughs> and then if it's something you're really knowledgeable of, he might slip and say a name wrong. And go, oh, I thought you were fucking prepared. You know, it's this funny banter. I'm glad somebody caught that. Yes, that's exactly what's fucking happening. Get it wrong. When it's a very important interview, I'm like, look, please read these questions <laughs> beforehand. Just give them a once over. It, right. I don't read the script. Script reads me. He's because right. Because I realize that right. like, Durbin has anxiety with people and not so much words where you have just, just presence. I mean, you, you are. You, 
you know, you. the king. But at the same time, no one likes being called out. And that fucker right there, wherever you see him, like, you know who you are. He has no problem of just saying stuff in front of people. But it's what's amazing is how you guys both handle it separately, your personalities. And then even like when you'll like throw things at him, David always has a great way of being like, okay, like, oh, that stung a little bit, but now I'm going to fucking sledge him in your face. And you're just going to be like, sorry, sir. You don't want to, we may be really good best friends, but you don't want to hear us talk about fucking the endings of movies because that's what we leave each other at the door. Fuck that. He, he's never fucking satisfied with ending of any movie unless he wrote it. So I'm just telling you that, right? It could have been this. It could have been that. Like, no. Yeah. See, look at him. Look how he's getting now. He's getting, look, look he, the yeah, moment you yeah, said that, yeah. he's like this. He's like this. At first. He's got the mic here. He's like this. He went, no. He, no. He's twirling the fuck out of that pin down there. But other than that, man, thank you for that, man. And then you. I Hold want, on. We're not off the air yet. Oh, no, we're, we're good. We're, we're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back. Yeah, let's bring yeah. it back. So let me ask you this. Uh let me at least get this far from Jared. Since you've done this, um, I don't want to speak of it, but it let me know if it's still going on. We saw you got you doing something with the Brain Trust and some, a couple of other projects. What's what have you had going on? Um, well, I recently started a um, marketing media company called uh, TBT Media, um, okay. which stands for the Brain Trust, um, mm-hmm. and that's been a uh, pretty awesome. I mean, it's a slow process, as you know, starting anything new, but within a even before we we even had our first official meeting. We uh, got hired from a, a company up in Maryland that right now that's happening, but this longevity is going to be pretty badass. And then we actually did the, uh, which is pretty cool, the and interesting, the Libertarian um, Convention uh, down south, which was our first thing together. And it was kind of, it was, it was very, it reminded me so much of day one of Kill because I've never worked with them. Um, Carter and Matthew, Matthew's 21, Carter's 24. And I'm directing the the stuff there, you know, the, the camera. We're all we all own the company. And it was like the moment we walked into the conference center, it was like go time. And it brought back exactly every emotion of how we walked on the kill and said and when dirt is at action. And it was like it's so surreal all these years later, and to be doing what I love, and then also to be able to create for people and then also the opportunity where it's going to lead. That's awesome. No, that definitely is here. Let me ask you this. Cause I know we asked everybody else um, for a lot of people who don't know what a producer actually does. They, they like I've directed films and they'll be like, Oh, you're the producer, right? I'm like, no bitch. I directed, or I, I did something else. So, and then you were producer and executive producer and a writer, but just, uh, could you speak to actually truly what a producer does? Cause I'll say this. Yeah. The script had to come together. Yeah. The acting had to come together, but the some of the buildings we got and some of the connections you had talk about, because that is a very big part of it. Cause you tell people about that. Who, Cause there's this kid out there right now that wants to be art. They want to be, they want to be right. Jared Rush. They want to be the one man and third man. Talk, talk to them about that process. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, so, uh, how I got baptized in producing, uh, obviously I have a different, um, I guess, worldview of it, but producing itself is, there's many aspects. So you've got, you know, producer, social producer, executive producer, and most major, you know, studio films you'll see, even the lead actors, executive producer, executive producer, all these producers. And it's just a payout. Like they're not, some of them are not really doing any producing. They're just acting. They get an extra pay for it or pay bump. But producing, especially a independent film, as I've always said, I've said that if um, if if filming, if uh, doing a film is the battle, independent film is the war, because an independent film, you literally, um, it, it's there. The only thing holding you back is you, because people wouldn't say money, because that was the thing like we did on a film, like we had a budget that we desired. And it, it did not happen. But as a producer, executive producer, most executive producers are the ones who bring the money in or find the money. When we had a goal of a certain amount for crowdfunding and we didn't hit it, we still made the film. And, and I think the most important thing, and I, I say this in, in many different kind of crafts of people, that, you know, if you don't plan, you know, you plan to fail because everything we did before action the hours, the meetings, the rewrites. I mean, there's so many unseen things that happen to make a production um, very popular. Like prime example in the movie Mother, which, you know, hit and miss with some people. For three months, 
Ed Harris, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, and the other actors were in a warehouse with the layout of a house that was taped up, looked like the house, and they just removed, learned the moves of all that. So people don't see that. So there's a movie, I'm like, I first didn't like it. But then when I saw the behind the scenes, like, okay, now I have a different respect for it. But most people just go to movies and go, oh, that was dumb or stupid. And it's like when I saw Suicide Squad, it was like hit and miss with some people, but it's like, that was a James Gunn film. You know James Gunn, it was perfect. But you don't go into a, a Nolan film thinking you're going to have a, a Michael Bay film. Right. Um, I think as a producer, it comes down to throwing yourself into everything. And no, yes, and knowing exactly what um, is expected of everyone. Like having, like setting the, not like setting the pace as we talked about Kill. Because anyway, I've been on production since that where, you know, it, like, because my pet peeve is wasting time. I and mean, you brought it up there and like that, that scene in, in the office building on the 22nd floor or whatever, that was the longest of waiting, but it was not because of anything we didn't do. It was because of setting, timing, you know, environment, the, the uh, you know, outside, all that kind of stuff. But when I'm, you know, I've been on the sets where we're sitting for four hours, three hours, and I'm just like, and let, let's go. And that's the thing is I, I realized in some where I might not be that loved anymore by certain people, I come in very intense because I'm like, 515, you know, and I would explain that. But I think the most important thing, especially as a producer who is on set, especially if the executive producer is on set, is setting that tone, even for the director, you know, because a lot of people can get lost where the director, I always say director is like this actors like this. I always saw this is how I should be as a producer. I need to see everything and everybody. Oh, look, that person right there, that extra sitting by themselves, they don't know what's going on, that they have to be in wardrobe in five minutes. You know, and, and then sometimes, like I said before, I would go up to Dirt and go, hey, do they know? And he go, no. And then sometimes I'd be like, hey, can you go talk to him? I'll walk away. Because I realized he also would need to be pushed to get out of that tunnel vision because there might be days that would be good to know that people are not seeing like I need to see this, you know, have this kind of understanding too. But I think as a, as a producer, it comes down to making tough decisions and also taking everything on you and having a success, successful production, but also not being known. Cause that's the thing, like, you know, I was going to say this when you, when you talked about, and I'll lead into the question about what, what was the, um, the magical moment, the magical moment was being about a month post premiere and I'm sitting at a friend's house. There's all these people around. We're having drinks and talking. And my friend and her husband were at the premiere. And he was talking about your um, your character. And he said, uh, you know, that, that guy, I don't think he was real. Um, I don't know. She said he was real, but I don't know if he was real. And someone needs to know. And he knows it's my film. And I said, he's like, a writer's got to know. And I went, you, you know, I'm a writer. I'm one of the co-creators and co-writers. It's like, oh, and then he goes, well, do you think that guy is real or not next to Robert Partridge? I go, well, Jared Rush, the, the moviegoer, would say, probably not. But Jared, the producer would go, what do you think? And it was, it was a surreal moment to literally be sitting there and they're talking about my fucking movie. Like I would do with friends all the time talking about, you know, anything from Star Wars to Citizen Kane. And I'm like, and it was a 30 minute conversation. Surreal. Wow. Hey, really quick, because I know we're going to wrap you before, but how about you want to say hey to Mr. Baskin Robbins himself? He scoops here. Scoops. <laughs> <laughs> You're, we went hey. along. We come here right in time, like a hit pitch. Right in time. Right in time. No. 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 He's on California time or Texas time. Actually, I do got to leave in about five minutes. I got in there and call. Uh, it's, it's cool. All right, Ronnie, hold on. We're going to wrap Jared and we're going to give you a super three minutes to get you. But Jared, uh, before you go, uh, you gave us the magical moment on set. Let, uh, right right before, before we get out of here, uh, you already let us know where we can find you at. Uh, is there any advice you want to give the world? Just... PC, advice that you would like to give the world, or anything nice. you want to say, any, any poem, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to give. No, I, I would say, um, as uh, C.S. Lewis said, you're never too old to dream a new dream. 
And the fact being 44 years old, and it wasn't until I was 40, uh, becoming an executive producer, co-writer, co-creator of my first film, that literally went international. And and the fact that it's still something happening, you know, and I and and nobody can dictate to you what you can and cannot do. And I, I believe all you have to do is keep doing it. And I always like, and sometimes you strive, you strive to do something, to make something, and it might suck. But if it continues sucking, then what you can do, we realize maybe I need to do something else in that craft because there's a, many opportunities in this thing. But the most important thing is never give up, always have fun, and don't listen to the people in your ear who are being negative. Just be positive and focus on what you need to do. That you, I couldn't have put it better myself, Jared. Listen, we thank you for it. We'll make sure we put your information in there. We thank you for being a fan of the show, for taking the time out from the Brain Trust, from Third Man, from your nephew that I know you love to death. We thank you for giving us this time, man. We'll see you soon. And uh, hey. That's a wrap for Jared. <laughs> <laughs> love you guys. Thank you. Don't thank him, you, guys. Him, Jay, man. You know All right. All right. We're going to get three. To the latest motherfucker this side of the Eastern Hemisphere, Mr. I Fell Asleep, Mr. I'm Never Gonna Coach Again, DCF is looking for me. You know him. You know what? Your your punctuality is tragic. Tragic. It's tragic. <laughs> it's tragic. It's tragic. Hey, he's they carrying... told me we had a we had a double header at midnight. Nah, nah, nah. He, he's carrying more white kids than uh Seinfeld has. I got to <laughs> I want he resetting real quick. Hold on one second. You still going to Tez and uh what's called the show? Oh, what time it is? Eight o'clock. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell no. Nah. Now nah, you ain't going. How you gonna show up to any shit? And we invited you first. Anyway, bring us in. Bring us in. This only gonna take like 90, uh, two to three minutes. We got you. Bring us in, sir. All right. We are joined by Ronnie Joe Quinn, Mr. Coach Berardo, Scoopski Potatoes. Uh, Ronnie. Mr. How Double did, Scoops. How did, 31 how you, flavors himself. How'd you end up in the role? How did I end up in the role? Uh, I heard about a movie that was being uh, written by a group of funky cats. Um, and they had a few opening positions. So I looked at all the characters that will best fit my style and my persona. And I came across Coach Barato, you know, and uh, it was a match made in heaven, you know? Let me ask you this, being a, you're an artist, but you lean to primarily towards comedy and you have certain comedians like, oh, let me, who comes to mind? Brandon T. Jackson, he's done stuff like uh, Tropic Thunder and then a thing, couple of things after that. And then he leaves it and doesn't really act anymore, but he's now back to doing comedy. Is, is comedy your main thing or would you want to veer more into acting or what is it that really drew you to the role and then after this made you continue doing comedy? Uh, well, you know, I'm a sports fanatic, so anything sports related is, you know, uh, like a cherry on top. So when they needed a, a, a coach, I definitely, uh, was aiming for that position as far as like comedy. Yes. Comedy is the number one. That's my baby. That's my creator. Um, and it's going to always be comedy, any comedy role that's available. You know, I usually want to be the first ones on it. And that's the path that we're going to. But, you know, Coach any, Barato. Any favorite memory from set? Uh, from the set? I mean, I guess the, the memory, I would say, I guess are we saying good memories or bad memories? Uh, any memory. Period. A favorite memory. Uh, a favorite memory? I say the favorite memory is the how we, I guess, was able to make two baseball teams with like seven kids. <laughs> <laughs> very diverse, yeah. very diverse yeah. baseball team. Keep keep the camera rolling. Keep it just rotate, <laughs> rotate. Like I, I seen a kid hit the ball to himself, baby coach one time. I, I was like, man, this is amazing <laughs> production right here. Like I don't think. I don't even know. We we had superstar. We had talented kids. Like you know, we I think we had the future Jose Canseco out there in the park. I don't I don't really know. Like oh man, uh, oh man. Any question? What was the uh, um shit? I, I, I'm checking out. 
Okay, I'll check in. Thank you. All right. So with that being said, let me ask you this. Uh, you were you, come on in. You were at the, you were at the we only got like ninety seconds left. You were at the premiere the night of. What was it like for you to experience? I know um you. I don't know if you've done a red carpet event, but talk talk to us real quick about the premiere being there the night of and seeing everybody and that excitement and that energy. Man, that was crazy. <laughs> you know, like. For oh, honestly, for it to be an independent oh, film and for oh. it to have like a red carpet event where that many people showed up, like it was like it was like the beginning of like the purge or something like that when everybody was dressed in tuxedos and stuff before the before the buzzer came off, before everybody was like, all right, it's free to kill everybody. You know, something <laughs> like that. It's just the, the atmosphere, like it was like a lot of, you know, it was hors d'oeuvres, people had drinks, like <laughs> What the hey. was it hors Yeah. Oh. I can't I, wait I to go to the next red carpet movie premiere. That's all I'm saying. Oh, well, we'll see. And I'm going to kill someone this Saturday. Uh, real <laughs> quick, before before we let you go here, uh, is, is there any advice you want to give people? Like, if there's a comedian out there who's like, man, listen, they, as I can do Vine. I can do Facebook. I can do this. Like, I'm, I'm trying to get to the algorithm. I, I can do movies. What advice would you have a com- for comedians, up and coming comedians now that are trying to get out there and trying to get where you're at and beyond? Uh, dibble and dab with everything could, you know, be a part of everything. Like, even though, you know, acting is not, I guess, a, a, a comedian or a comics, you know, first go to or anything like that. But due to us being comics and being able to, you know, talk in front of large crowds solo, you know, like acting it should come almost second nature. Got a few of them boys who uh, can't, <laughs> so, can't yeah, get it together. <laughs> grinding and just whatever, whatever you think you can put your comedian spin on okay. or your comic spin, go for it. All right, last question, and we're out here. Favorite favorite quote from any any movie? Your favorite movie ever? Let me hear. It. Are you favorite favorite quote movie ever? from from any movie ever? Favorite quote from any movie ever? Go for it. You guys want to see a dead body? Don't do. I don't. You're gonna make me fuck Rick up. <laughs> oh, ooh, ooh, in a movie, in a movie. In a movie. Don't put that quarter in your pocket. If you put it in your pocket, it's just like any other quarter. Hey! Hey! Friendo. Friendo. There we go. No country for old men. And what Tarantino say? No country for black men. Guys, that's Ronnie Joe Quinn. You can find him at what Comedian Joe King Instagram. Hey, man, we really appreciate it. Keep grinding. We'll see you in the live chat. Uh, What's the date again, sir? Uh, well, for you, let's get there. Let's get there at four o'clock on the seventeenth. Yeah, oh, this way, in person, oh. by the way, he's late to every fucking thing. So when he was like, "I just woke up," I knew it wasn't a lie. I, I fully believed it. Well, that's why I said four o'clock. <laughs> Should be there at four o'clock. You'll be right on time. Hey, man, we'll see you soon. Thank you for everything, sir. We'll see you in the future. We'll put your information down there. Go get them tonight, man. All right, let's go. Woo! Yep. Uh, oh shit, we got 30 minutes before the next one or 20, 25. And we done after that. Shit. Yeah.